Use that in the drive, you home. And Hame, huge development overnight, and a huge development for the race that slows down the nation. We're only five sleeps away, and if you can even sleep. So for us, it's no sleep. Yeah, exactly. Next Monday, 50 people in horse suits racing around the small country town's harness racing track in Wedderburn. In Wedderburn. Small country town of Wedderburn. 800 metre track. It will be amazing, Ando. It's going to be one of the greatest sporting events this country's ever seen. And congratulations to people that have decided to come along. Yep. Congratulations to people that have decided to book themselves next to the radio next Monday yep. when the race happens. If you listen to the show, you're a member of the Turf Club. And, um, and the members shall rejoice because something happened overnight. Had. It's got big. This thing's got big. <laughs> it's now out of our hands and yeah. it's beginning to snowball. Exactly. My question to you is, is it too big now? It's when other outlets start talking about it. Yeah. That's when you start to think, okay, this is bigger than just the people show. Yeah. And, we're, a- and we're talking... A CNN-esque type media outlet. We are. Picked it up. We are. The yes. esque is important. important but it wasn't CNN. We haven't made it to CNN yet, <laughs> but we still got five dates. Absolutely. Australia's richest horse suit race is on Monday, everybody. Free entry. Get yourself to the tiny town of Wedderburn. Well, you do have to show your Hamish and Andy turf track membership card. <laughs> yes, yes. Exactly. We'll have people at the gates. If you weren't listening to the show yesterday, it yep. was deemed that. Obviously, you know that by listening to the show, you're one of the people, and everybody listening to the people show mm. has automatic en- uh, membership yep. to the Hamish Andy Turf Club. But what about membership cards? Great news. We discovered slash revealed on yesterday's show mm. that they're mime cards. Yeah, it's much cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly <laughs> easy for us to- We sent yeah. them out last night. Yeah. Look in your pocket. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> really loving the convenience of issuing mime, mime cards. cards. Yes. Because it is, it's is—it's magic. Can't find it? Oh, what's that behind your mum's ear? There's your there's your membership card. So you're there, mime cards. Please do scrunch it, fold around your pocket, look for it, bring it out, flash it to yep. get in. And you can mime however big you want the card to be, I suppose. That's, that's, yeah, we have sent some out that are pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> couple of people, you'll, you'll know who you are. You've got the jumbo ones. Hey, 50 people in horse suits lapping the track of Wedderburn. Um, it is the, the tiniest town that we found that had applied to be the race holder. And um, going we're going to make our way there. People from all around the country are getting there. Birds of Tokyo are playing. Jess Malboy is playing. Boom. Um, yeah, so get there. It'd be couple, great to see everyone. A couple of weeks ago when we floated this idea, and back then it was just could we – could we put on our own horse race mm. at this end of the year when horse racing is popular? Hats off to Wedderburn and all the towns that, that came forward because it, back then it was just a dream, and We didn't expect that we would actually be able to get the lease on a track mm. and to be able to take it over. The town of Wedderburn put a great case forward. Uh, they are a wonderful small town. And last night... I mean, this it, it went from big to huge last night. It certainly did because on win, yep. uh, Nine's affiliate, Channel Nine's affiliate for regional stations. CNN esque. <laughs> CNN esque, yes. They both do news. <laughs> uh, on win, we discovered or we heard word that they featured the people's race. Lead story. And we couldn't believe it. After a long drought, Hamish and Andy have given Wedderburn residents something to smile about. The biggest thing to happen to Wedderburn since the 1980 gold rush. I was flabbergasted, you could say. 50 people dressed as horses will run around Donald Park for the race that slows down the nation on Monday afternoon. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. It's all over Facebook and things like that. Can't wait until they do another movie. An expected crowd of more than 10,000 will also be coming to see performances by Jessica Malboy and Birds of Tokyo. This is huge. Birds of Tokyo played at the AFL Grand Final, for heaven's sake. Something Hamish and Andy have said they're looking forward to is a visit to the town's General Store Museum. We've been following it on the internet and having a look, so in case if they walk through the door, we would recognise them. <laughs> Hamish and Andy will also be coming to the Wedderburn pub with their hands and feet in a slab of concrete, which will be turned into a new tourist attraction in the town. This will be like Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> oh, a couple of high hopes there from Wedderburn. That's the mayor. That was Gav, Gav on Gav. the news We've last had night. Him on the show. Like we, that's so exciting and, and massively that's flattering to, to everyone. The people's show because it's a people's win. Because hey, now it's now now it's been on win news. Now this yeah. this has a real runaway feel to it. Ando, the things that spiked my interest out of the grabs where they had different townsfolk talking about it. Yeah. Um, one fellow saying, uh, 
Look, I can't wait to see the next movie. Yeah. <laughs> we'll cover that off in the next hour, I think. That's Look, I think a was, separate conversation. I think he, yeah, it does warrant a whole other conversation. Yeah. I think he was just excited to be on the news. Mm. And, um, you know, <laughs> just when I'll have a crack, it sounds like these guys might have done a movie. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then the guys putting the news together also went, well, let's not bother checking. Let's just assume they've done a movie. <laughs> um, I did like it's the biggest thing in the town since the 1980 Gold Rush. When I first heard it, I feel it, like I thought, that was a bit of, that was a Gold Rush that didn't, Quite make big city news, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I thought 1800s would have been more likely, but no, 1980, they did actually have a rush on gold. Have you uh, researched with, that? Yeah, people went up there with uh, metal detectors. <laughs> the headline was, <laughs> hey guys, there's some left. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred year old gold. And um, and look, special shout out to the, the elderly lady who's um, had to look up a photo of us. She runs the General Store Museum, oh, yeah, we'll, the Supermarket Museum. We'll so. be popping into that, don't you worry about that. <laughs> and well done for going online to, to know what our faces look like. Mm. And uh, the thing that I was that struck me when I was watching this uh, last night, and we're waking up at our website. It, I just it had that feeling, didn't it? Where you suddenly went, you know what this feels like to me? Hmm. Woodstock. Oh, that's a yeah, bit much. Yeah, it has that feeling. It suddenly <laughs> has that vibe of going, uh-oh, yeah. this was meant to be small, but yeah, now it's like big. traffic jams, everyone coming in from everywhere, it's on win. It's, yeah, which, which <laughs> everyone knows back in the day, Woodstock was on the regional the CNN, CNN's version of yeah, win. Yeah. And suddenly it just has that feel of going, this is huge. Yeah. Like this... I'm not this sure is, if it's at that level. But this has become... Woodstock-esque. This has become <laughs> Woodstock-esque, yeah. right? 131060, we don't often do this because mm. here's, here's the question I want to pose on the phones. Do you think you've ever been involved in anything this big and special and more often knows? <laughs> <laughs> 131060, looking for a no to the question. <laughs> Have you ever been involved in anything this, this historic, historic and special yeah. as the race that slows down the nation, Australia's <laughs> richest horse suit race? Nose only. Strictly nose, please. And uh, I just sort of had, I mean, it felt like it was the tipping point last night. Now, making the news, the people's race, and it hasn't even been run yet. So you can imagine the news outlets from all over the globe scrambling to get there for next Monday. Exactly. It just felt like suddenly this just dwarfs every other event. And the question we put on 131060, I think for the first time ever, Mm. looking for a no to the answer, to answer this question, have you ever been involved in anything this big or this special, Jared? Hey, ahoy, boys. Ahoy, ahoy Jared. Ahoy, Have you Jared. ever been involved in anything this big or this special? Oh, well, when I was a baby, I actually got kissed on the face by uh, Lady Diana. Wow. Uh, obviously, it's nowhere near as cool as the uh, the, the race that slows the nation on Sunday, <laughs> boys. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Thanks Jared. Jared. It's a good yeah, no. It's, nice. a... it's really nice to put it in perspective there, isn't it? Yeah. It's not just a straight no. It had an accompanying story, which it I l- think was important. It just let us know who it beat. Yeah, no, exactly. we're just. I mean, I'm happy to take someone just ringing up and saying yeah. no and hanging up. 13... Because we'll know what you mean. 131060 is the number. Elise, for the race that slows down the nation, obviously everyone listening is involved. Everyone going is involved. Sure. Do you, is... Um, is there anything that you've been involved in that is bigger than this? Uh, no, I did get no. married a couple of weeks ago and it was a pretty important day at the time and mm. I probably had the best day of my life, but so far. now it just sort of feels insignificant. Well, at least <laughs> yeah. your wedding yeah. had a bit of fun at the top of the chart for a yeah, little while. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, it's like it had a good release time, but unfortunately One Direction bought out a single just a couple of weeks later yeah. and it trumped it. Elisa probably popped the wedding photos away when she gets home <laughs> after going to the race. Ben, you ever been involved in anything this amazing? I think it's Trent, actually. Trent. Oh, my God, he's changed his name for privacy. <laughs> Trent. No. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> exactly what we needed. <laughs> Stick around, everybody. And, and Trent's done some stuff. <laughs> um, we, we, you can tell. You can tell. You can tell that Trent's been involved in a lot, a lot of, of things. A lot of stuff. Heavily at a public and private level. <laughs> so to hear a no from Trent really puts it in perspective as to how big this thing is. Hey, Mr. Andy. Our race that slows down the nation. The people's race, Sam. Australia's richest horse suit race happens four days away. Monday, one sleep. Uh, if, like us, you're going to go to bed tomorrow night <laughs> yeah. and hibernate through Saturday so you can be up all Sunday and Monday to enjoy the festivities <laughs> yeah. around us all converging on the very small country town of Wedderburn mm. to watch 50 people in horse suits 
gallop as fast as they can around the 800 metre track yep. there in Wedderburn, the Trots track. On our uh, Instagram um, social media pipe, Choose Your yep. Pipe. Choose Your Pipe, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. What do you want? What pipe? It's all the same content. We just repipe it. We're repiping it, piping it straight in your eyes. Sometimes it's different. Maybe you double pipe it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're sitting at your computer, you're looking at Facebook, but we're piping straight into Instagram on your phone. That's all right. That's right. Many pipes. Um, we have gonna have been sending out and going to feature... Um, a lot of the horses yep. uh, that are running in the it, horse suits. It's hard to get, you know, 50 across. Yep. And they are beautiful. They're all beautiful animals. Because these guys... Every, every athlete running is amazing. These guys and girls, a lot of efforts are in the outfits, which I'm impressed with. Yep. No Especially, one's going for super speed, it seems. They're all really collectively just leaning into the what is this race is all about. It's more of a spectacle. <laughs> the thing I like about our yeah. race is it's the perfect blend of spectacle and athleticism. Exactly. Because you don't build a two-man Trojan horse out of wood <laughs> on giant trolley wheels to have two guys hidden inside it pushing it around an 800-metre horse track. That's not Expecting obviously to win. the fastest horse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Trojan horse team, they must know they're going to lose. We certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> but they're doing it. And we're impressed with them. And they're travelling all the way to a small yep. country town to have a run in it because mm. they they understand the element of showmanship, yep. which yep. And I'm not having a go yep. at the Emirates Melbourne Cup, but I just wonder, yep. you don't see a funny hat on the horses. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you don't a few- see a funny pair of specs on the jockeys. They're a little bit too business for our liking. And a few of the horses that know they're going to lose at the back end wouldn't hurt them to strap some fireworks to the back or yeah, put some yeah, symbols on your ankles. Propeller hat or something. <laughs> Would it, would it be crazy to paint your tail purple? It's not heavier. It's just a bit of fun. But no, no they don't because they're all they're business horses. Yeah, exactly. That's so, why ours is a better race, I think. Yeah, that's why we're the race. My opinion. We're the race that slows down the nation <laughs> yep. because we're not as serious as pumping the brakes for the race that stops the nation. Hey, um, so a lot of people have been monitoring the different horses that are going up. And it was suggested... Well, actually, we caught someone yeah. looking at the different athletes yeah. going, well, he's not going to win. You know, he's a little bit tubby. And we went, whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 You can't judge fat blokes. Yeah. You can't judge fat blokes on fitness. Yeah. You and I have been stung many, many times, times in our life, Ando, yeah. by fat, fit guys. Yeah. 13, 10, 60, are you a fat, fit guy? Yeah. Because it's a real category. It's a category that I think gets overlooked. Everyone's looking at, like, the front cover of men's magazines yeah, or yeah. health magazines going, well, that's what fit guys look like. They nah. look like Brad Pitt in Fight Club. Not all the time. Sometimes the fittest blokes... Mm. Are just wonderfully fat and doughy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, you look at the, I'm not saying the English rugby team were particularly wonderful in the World <laughs> Cup. You, know, you look at other English rugby teams, very fit, fat, fat blokes. Yeah. I um, remember I lost that swimming race. You got pantsed in a swimming race to a fit fat bloke. Yeah, we, we were, we'd call, I, we'd, you and I had a bit of a whisper and looked at him yeah. and went, oh my God, I'll give him like a 100 meter head start. Yeah, I mean, and, be nice. Uh, and, Don't uh, embarrass him. On the most, for most of the race, he did backstroke laughing at me as I tried to tear him down. He was just absolutely <laughs> howling with laughter at you. Fat fit blokes too, they can, you know, they lift in a lot of weight. Yep. I saw, a, I saw a guy the other day. This is a mate of a mate. This mate of mine, he's a trainer. He's a personal trainer. He says, look at this. Mm. Shows me this guy. I said, I've got to be honest with you, he looks unremarkable. I wouldn't look at him in the street and go, mm. that's incredible. He bench pressed, and I assume this is good because I'm imagining lifting it, 165 kilograms. <laughs> yeah, good. Like that's... That's you. That's us together. Yeah, that's us together, and he's lifting it up. Third remarkable guy, fat fit guy. Never <laughs> underestimate a fat guy. Thirteen ten sixty. Are you a fat fit guy? What's your stats? Yeah. <laughs> what have you done? What have you done as a fat? And fit when bloke? have you been underestimated? We're celebrating the fat fit blokes because it's a segment of society yeah. that doesn't really get celebrated they get enough. Off. I haven't watched The Biggest Loser uh, at all. I've only watched one episode this mm. season. I never really watch it. So. I'd be interested to know because, like, Commando and the other guy, they're yeah. ripped. They're not skinny guys, no. but they're, like, muscular. Yeah. Do they tell the guys on it, listen, you you could do well as a fit fat guy? Or do they just <laughs> yeah, yeah. say, you must lose weight? Like, <laughs> yeah. do they give them the options? <laughs> or do they go, you have to look like me? Or you have another option, yeah. which is t- very respectable, which is a fat, fat fit bloke. I think the fact that the old idea is to lose weight on it's that true. show. <laughs> but maybe it's but a missed opportunity. It is. Jared, you know a fat fit bloke. I do know a fat but fit bloke, yes. Yeah. I um I joined up with him in the navy, so I'm mean, I currently serve in the navy and um joined up through recruit school. And whenever we get in trouble in recruit school, they'd send us on like a, a hundred meter um kind of a in trouble run around. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, official please, operation please term for it. Please don't use navy jargon with us, Jared. We're just civilians. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, yeah, that was called bull ring. So you get in trouble and you have to run around in circles for yeah, hundred right. meters. Yeah, and, um, right. And this guy I joined up with is a very fat guy, about 130 kilos, and he, um, 
you always hear him coming behind you because his thighs were rubbing together. The big. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, here he comes again. Like a falcon. <laughs> he put you to shame every time, and everyone's like, "Why is he so? Why is he so quick?" The fit fat guy. That's it. They <laughs> exactly. can be very they explosive. Can. They can be explosive. Our friend Aaron Hillier made him very <laughs> fast over thirty meters. <laughs> Pretends he's not fat though, but he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on the show a number of times. He challenges anyone pubs regularly for a 30-metre dash. 30, 30 to 40-metre sprints is where he makes a lot of his money at the back of pubs. <laughs> Danny, Daddy. you are a fit, fat bloke. I am. Ahoy, boys. Ahoy, Ahoy, Daddy. Ahoy Danny. And massive respect to you. What's your, what's your stats? What, what are you really excelling in as a fit, fat bloke? Look, I'm excelling in squash at the moment, but I do play golf and tennis and all of the others, and uh, I'm, I'm probably winning at the uh, KFC, McDonald's and Pizza Hut eating competition <laughs> yeah. as well. Also a recognised so, sport. See, Danny, so, again, explosive power in yeah. the squash court. You, in you, the squash court. Do you move a lot faster than people give you credit for? I do. I think I get them. I get them. They look at me. They take one look at me and think this is going to be an easy win, and then by the end of it, when I've beaten them, they're ashamed of themselves. How are you if the, if the game goes the distance? In those yeah. last sets, are you still putting in? Have you got that fitness, or is it more explosive power? Uh, yeah, well, I'm seeing three of them by the end if it goes to five. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's okay. good. I'm losing my vision. So <laughs> on top of all of that, boys, I, I'm a clown as a profession, and I get uh, constantly called by all of the little kids that I'm fat. Yeah, so, <laughs> right. Have you embraced it into your clown name? What's your clown I, name, Danny? I have my, No, I haven't, but my clown name is Piccolo. Oh, that's a which ir- is actually irony. yeah, okay, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> amusingly, <Danny>. amusingly small. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Danny. Alex, tell us, hey. are, you a, are you a fit fat guy? I am a fit fat guy. Yeah. What, what are your numbers, Alex? What do you weigh? <clears throat> oh, I'm 23 years old. I weigh 126.5 kilos. Oh, wow. Yep. yep. I'm 170 centimeters tall, and I'm a and I'm like a mini mod like the little kids NRL referee. All right, you're a referee. So a lot of running. So do all the way up to all age, which is, you know, keeping up with the... Yeah, the big guys. 23-year-olds. and yeah. So you're running... How many Ks a game do you reckon you run? Oh, I reckon at least anywhere between 3 to 5K. Yeah, and covering it and, and being covering and right game. on the action. So huge engine. Yeah. Yes. And that's what it's that's what it mostly is. It's just a little bit of wrapping around a huge engine. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. and you, you do two to three games a day. Yeah. Oh, Alex, unbelievable. we salute you, mate. You've got you've got two jacks in you. And Jack weighs <laughs> tackling. Jack weighs about nine kilograms. <laughs> you're just full of jacks. And you're doing it well done. But where the fat fit guys? I everyone. desperately want one to win It'd on be Monday. Nice. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't it? it be nice? Our race that slows down the nation four days away in the small country town of Wedderburn. We'll be holding uh, the richest horse suit race in Australia. 50 guys in horse suits lapping the Wedderburn track ham. It's going to be huge. And obviously, when you get an event this big, it not only brings out the public and it's a free event. If you listen to the show, you've got a membership to the race track automatically. And the good news is your membership card is is a mime card. So just check your pockets now. You've got one. Uh, You do need to show it at the door. Not only that, though, but you're going to get celebs. Like, obviously, with big horse races, I mean, we've talked about it on the show before, yeah. the biggest celeb in the world is the Queen, and yes. she often pops down to Royal Ascot. Yep. Now, we're not going to get the Queen, but we're going to get our fair share of A-list celebrities because very much like the birdcage area yeah. at Flemington for the Emirates Melbourne Cup, yeah. we will have our own VIP, VIP area. area, except we've got a very identical person's marquee. <laughs> If you look like a celebrity, you're thoroughly encouraged to come along and try your luck to get into this exclusive arena. You might have heard on the show a couple of weeks ago we had these guys nominating themselves. Well, we've got a group of mates who reckon we can add to their celebrity lookalikes. Oh, who could you bring? Bradley Cooper, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Kramer from Friends. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Kramer from Friends. Kramer from Seinfeld. Oh, Kramer from Seinfeld. No, no, no. I love it, Lucky. <laughs> Schwarzenegger's tough. I mean, is he big? I mean, Schwarzenegger yeah, was missed. Yeah, hey, we wouldn't bring a small Schwarzenegger. No. <laughs> <laughs> it occurred to us, Ham, though, that we're going to have a fair bit to do yep. on the day, and we'd plan to stay out there and man the door, but no, we need to get a better doorman, and we've uh, enlisted the help of Josh. Josh. You're wearing a black T-shirt. <laughs> Perfect door, man. You already look like a security guard. You've got tats. You've got muscles. Have you got a clicker? Have you got, a, uh, tough. Have you got a, like yeah. a... Like a pen clicker? Yeah. No, William, you can pretend it is for the radio, <laughs> yeah. but like a, a nightclub numbers clicker. We'll get you uh, one. Okay, I'll need one, one of those, definitely. Yeah, we'll get you a clicker. We'll get okay. you a little number, a little so, badge with a... Well, 14. We'll put a 14 <laughs> on your top. So you'll look like a security guard. Mm. Here's the thing, though. People are going to be coming up to you and going, hey, I'm Bradley Cooper. Mm. Do you have what it takes to go... All right, I'll buy that. Or 
in the event that you just don't think it looks enough like Bradley Cooper, are you happy to be knocking people back? Well, if it's Bradley Cooper, come on in. It's not party. actually going to be Bradley Cooper. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you've been. <laughs> if so, you look like Bradley Cooper, come on in. Okay, okay. But yeah. that's the thing. We're probably not going to get an identical B Coop. You're mm, probably yeah. going to get so it looks like an 80%. Like we'll set at the bar at about 80%. 80%. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm pretty nice. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Well, we need you. Back. We need like, you Josh, we need you to be harsh because so otherwise instance, people would just look like a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, but so, it needs to be a bunch of celeb lookalikes. Like, it so, has to give so out. So, for instance, if Jack event- came up to you and said, I'm Michael Sarah. I'm Michael Sarah from the film Juno. Definitely. You're in. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yep, so, I reckon I we're, see that. It, we're right. Say, so if I come up to you and said, I'm Jason Biggs. Yeah, I definitely yeah. see that too. <laughs> Correct. Yes. I come up to you and I go, Hi, I'm Topher Grace. Mm. Um, I don't know who that is. Good, yeah. good, because I'm actually a young Harrison Ford. <laughs> so, very good, Josh. That's good. All well, right. Well, we, we yeah. actually do need you to know celebrities too, so we've got a little test for you here. I just brought up a random person on my phone. All right, who's that? Hey. Uh, Mark Wahlberg. Close. It's well flattering for Wahlberg. It's wrestler and actor John Cena. It does look a little <laughs> bit like the, Mark Wahlberg. Only the yeah. most famous guy in the world. Although, yeah. A Cena probably could get into a Wahlberg lookalike contest. <laughs> so he, he, he could come in if he said, Hi, I look like Mark Wahlberg. This person here. Oh. oh come on, you've got to get that. Toby Maguire. Yes. yes. Okay. So would I get in as a Toby Maguire? Um, be harsh. No. Correct. Oh, I'm, no, more of a, I'm more of a John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> so, Josh, you know your role now. Yeah. You've got okay. to prepare to be harsh. Well, I like Because the otherwise, air- it's just a bunch of nobodies. Yeah. Exactly. We, have, we have no point in having a very identical person's mark if it's just a bunch of no one. <laughs> yes. We want, we want no ones that look like someone <laughs> enough. So, I suppose, Josh, what we want is when people are walking up to you, they're going to plead their case and yeah. say they're someone, but be studying them before they get there. And yeah. in your head, if you're already going, say, you know, Jason Biggs for me, and I go up and go, I'm Jason Biggs, you'll know in that instance to go, ah, that's, that's what this, this is all yep. about. So, you'll know Danny DeVito when he turns up. <laughs> <laughs> like if there's a DeVito lookalike, you'll be... But I mean, but if he turns up and he says, look, I've always thought I was, you know, I was a little bit of a Robert De Niro, you'll be like, mate, mate look, go away, come, come back. <laughs> yeah. Come back and tell me DeVito and you can get in. Josh, good luck. Go luck. for a walk, think about it. You'll you be like. manning our very identical person tent, our VIP tent from one mm. for the duration, I think. This is huge because yes. it now puts us in the rare air of the other mm, yeah. of the other racing carnivals that mm. have you know Kidman and yeah. Beckinsale and all those people <laughs> walking around. And now we're just going to blow them out of the water with a massive list of names. Thanks but only much, if you mate. do your job. Be harsh, Josh. I cannot wait. <laughs> okay, I cannot good. wait. All right, we'll Hamish Be sure to get to HamishNetty.com. The event info is there. If you look like someone, you're a chance to be in the VIP tent. And now there's extra incentive for you to come because did we? Is it one free drink in yeah, there? One free drink in there. Guys, you've heard the deal. <laughs> yeah. Get in your car. We'll see you Monday. <laughs> hey, uh, if people are in trouble, they can reach out at hamishnady.com. Yeah. And look, uh, and on Monday, uh, sporting history will be made. Mm. Um, it, it, there's just no no two ways about it. We're going to have the race that slows down the nation. We'll be in the very small country town of Wedderburn. Mm. Hey, if you are listening to this show, you are, but if people are out there listening to the show, you are automatically a member of the Turf Club. Yep. And... and- you As get, we discovered the other day on the show, you get a membership card. Which is a mime card. Yeah. And that's the... We that's couldn't, the, couldn't afford to send them all out, so you just have to mime, showing the card. There's a lot of businesses that are putting up our poster of the race, yep. wherever they are in Australia. If you see the poster up there, go in, ask for the discount. Ask for the discount, reach into your pocket, pull out the mime card. Yeah. They'll obviously know what's going on because no other club or association mm. uses the mime card <laughs> format. So we have... A, the rights to it. Yep. We're the only people using the mime card situation. It was almost flawless, and at the time we announced it, we encouraged everyone to look into their puppets and pockets and find their mime card, yep. and everyone did. And yep. it was great, so instantly everyone had their membership card. Greg has emailed him. He says, hey, guys, I lost my bloody mime card. <sighs> Looked everywhere. Has anyone handed it in? Yep. Is there an opportunity to get a replacement card? Now, we cannot... Send out replacement mime cards. We did the think. maximum ana- amount at the time. <laughs> yeah. Everyone got their mime card. Um, we've got to give that news to Greg now. He joins us. Greg, so bad news, shame. Bad news first, Greg. We can't get you a replacement. Yeah, I just heard that, guys. Look, thanks for your support. And um, I just uh, hope that people, you know, have uh, found it and will hand it in or <laughs> well, I just don't want it in the wrong hands. So I assume you haven't found it since you sent the email. Have you looked everywhere? No, oh, I've turned this place upside down. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The kids looking and no, nothing. Um, Greg, when's the last time you had your mime card? Let's try and go back to there. Do you remember the last time you looked at it or used it? 
Yeah, I do. Look, it, it might have been my fault. I was, you know, skylarking a bit, showing off with it to yeah. to a few people at work and so on. I know I had it then. Went home, went for it to show the kids. Yep. Wasn't there? Okay, so and were they in between work and, and your home, home? You've misplaced yeah. it. Your now, mime card. When you were running around at work showing everyone the card, were they impressed? Oh, yeah, they were impressed, and that causes a bit of suspicion on my behalf. Yeah, okay, I mean, it could be stolen. Yeah. Jealousy. Yeah, yeah. So when, exactly. When, yeah. Uh, yeah, when in, being impressed turns yeah. to being fiercely jealous. Yeah. Well, Greg, that's what the show is for. It is the people's show, 13, 10, 60. Look, we know it's a long shot, Yeah. but have you seen Greg's mime, mime card? card? Yeah, 13, 10, 60, you got any leads? And if, if we can get someone to send it in, Greg, we have to get it express post because we'll need it by tomorrow. We'll yeah. make sure we can get it out to you yeah. by yeah. Monday. Agreed. Right. Stuff my weekend up at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I know, mate. I know, you mate. hang in there, mate. You've been very <laughs> brave, and hopefully this is almost <laughs> over. This ordeal. <laughs> Thirteen ten sixty. Can you help out, Greg? Greg it's a bloody yeah. long shot. You can hear the anguish in his voice. Have you seen his mime membership card? His membership card. And if you've seen it out there, thirteen ten sixty. Give us a buzz. And Fingers crossed. See if we can can't find it for him. <laughs> Greg, you still there? Yeah, I am, mate. Hopeful as ever. Yeah, thanks, bud. Good on you, uh, mate. Hang in there. Look, uh, I mean, it's always going to be a long shot. It's, it's a very, very small card. Yeah. I mean, they're the different si- sizes. They are different sizes. How big was your one, Greg? I just fitted. Perfectly in my palm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was the ideal size, I thought. And yeah. that's, that added to, adds to the loss. <laughs> it does, does it? When you get God, a nice especially card. It's, everyone knows that pain of when you finally find the right size <laughs> card and then you don't have it anymore. Now, we no, know this is a it. needle in a haystack. Yep. But 13, 10, 60. Has anyone seen Greg's mime card? Byron, you seen it? Hey, boys, how are you? Yeah, good, mate. Great, Byron. Fingers crossed that hopefully someone's seen Greg's card. Got a lead? Well, Unfortunately, I haven't, but, um, mate, I'm uh, willing to uh, actually lend him mine for the day. Yeah. Um, I mean, but I would like it after he's finished with it. I don't want him to keep it for me. That's very nice of you, Byron, but if you look at the back, they're non-transferable. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Come on, boys, you've got to let him in. <laughs> rules are rules. I know. Sorry, Byron. It's a non-transferable don't, don't membership. Don't make the rules. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's nice that's, of you. That's good. clearly printed on the back. Uh, yeah. Harry, Harry, have you seen Greg's mime membership card to the Hamish Andy Turf Club? I have, I have, mate. Um, someone uh, came in and used it at the cafe. I think they've stolen it. Oh, no. no. Did you get a description? Uh, no, uh, no, I didn't. He uh, he was a mime person. Oh, okay. Jeez. Gee, gee, that's... Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, there's there's an invisible person out there with an invisible card. He's going to be tough get to track. So, Chris, um, uh, yeah. have you seen the mime card? Oh, I haven't seen Craig's, but you sent me two. Oh, oh, sorry. That's an admin error. No. You can understand the um, the confusion. When we sent them out, it was a mass send-out, so there's yeah. going to be a few anomalies here, there, and everywhere. Well, um, yeah, yeah, so. Chris, well, um, do you mind sending one back into us? Oh, yeah, one's obviously addressed to me, personalised. Yeah. Yep. So you guys do an excellent job. Yep. Um, but the other one's blank, so I oh. guess you could fill out his details. Well, oh, okay. let's that's stay on hold. We'll, we'll take, it as, a, take it as a fallback. That's a good idea. Ben, have you seen Greg's mime card? Unfortunately, I haven't, but Damn. I actually lost mine yesterday, and I found it underneath my air guitar. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. You got it. Hang Don't on to your card. those kind of secret places, you know, yeah. where you just can't find things. That might jog Greg's memory. Like, we um, do have to stress to people, you're like, you're going to need it for Monday. Yeah. Do keep it in a safe spot. We, we sort of thought by sending them out on Tuesday or Wednesday. Hey, late call in here, Ham. I think we've got Tam oh, on the... Uh, Don't tell me. Tam, Tam are you there? Yes, yes I am. Yeah. Look, I've got, look, I've got it. I've got you, you've got it. it. You've got Greg's I, card. Yeah, for sure. I'll be, I'll be hold, I'll hold for about bloody 10 minutes. Oh, well, sorry, sorry, Tam. Tam. There's so, so many people gonna, calling. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, great. Tam, unbelievable. Really? What are the chances? Greg, Greg, did you hear that, Greg? I did, I did. I'm over the moon. Where is she? I'll come yeah. and collect it. Tam, we're about to you. Yeah, where, where, where do you think I am? I don't know. Must be on the home. Are, are you, do you live on the way home from work? I'm sure yeah, you do. I'm just near, I'm just near your work, Greg. Oh, <laughs> it checks out. <laughs> Nobody could make up stories what? like that on the fly. It's absolutely checked out. Thank you, Tam and <laughs> Greg. Huge news there. We'll, keep, we'll make sure Tam and Greg can connect off air and facilitate the smooth handover of the card. Or since Tam's near Greg's work, perhaps she can put it in a safe spot. He can pick it up tomorrow morning on his way back in so he can show off with it again at work. Greg, glad Thank we could you. help out, mate. Thank you to everyone that tried. Yes, thank you very much for, for being a part of today's show. Um, only a few more days until the race slows down the nation. 
If you're thinking of jumping in a car and getting yourself there, you to make the right thoughts are in your brain. Yeah. Because embrace the race. It'd be great to see everybody. Wedderburn Racetrack, a parade hand that's going to start at 12.30 in the central part of town. And it's we'll make our way to the, to the track with 50 people in horse suits for Birds of Tokyo, Jess Malboy, and the race itself. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one. See you on Friday. Thanks off Friday, everyone! Hamish and Andy back to drive you home. Very relaxed from the waist down, heading in to the weekend, Ham, because the backs are off. Nothing crude about it. Just a way to free up the legs. Ah, feels good, Andy. We'll get a nice breeze around the knees. And yeah. hot knees are one of the worst things you can have yeah. on a Friday. <laughs> hot, hot, Beef? hot upper knees, too. Oh, yeah, exactly. So it, it just, the, and really the mid-thigh section... <laughs> Getting that nice and cool out of the jeans really just makes you know that there's only a few hours left of the working week. It also means we're one... If you're us, no hours ever (laughs) in the working working week. week. Haim, there's almost no hours left before the race that slows down the nation. If you're preparing to get there... It's our 50, man, 50 people in horse, suit, ra- horse suits racing around our country track in Wedderburn. It's happening on Monday. It's, gonna be it's great. an open event. Anyone can get there. Let's check in with a few of the horses, as well as outlining some of the rules. Should we do race rules? Race I don't rules think we've even mentioned the race rules, but obviously when you've got 50 horse, 50 man horses, 50 <laughs> people in horse suits running around a track, there have to be some rules. <laughs> like every race needs rules, and we do have our official ones. Yep written up and look if you're a type of person that loves to find a loophole please listen to the rules yeah and if you were trying to cheat just like we think we've closed the holes mm. but please have a listen next and just go here's how i'd cheat yeah 13 10, 60, available at all times just use please <laughs> let us use your sneaky brains for good Haim, our race that slows down oh. the nation <laughs> <laughs> it's on <laughs> <laughs> it is a kind of race that gets you laughing maniacally. It's pretty exciting. It's on Monday, everyone. We're so close. We're so close. Finally, the dream yeah. is here. And it was. It did just start as a dream, and it started as a whim. Mm. Look, I wonder. Packed, packed your suitcase yet to, for the travel? No need. Okay. I'm going in my. I'm going. We'll go up this weekend. I'm going to go in my race as a tire and just mm-hmm. just stay standing. <laughs> I won't be sleeping. I won't be moving. Yeah. I shan't have a need. For okay. a toothbrush, mm. because I'll be gently sipping at the rate of one sip every 10 minutes, <laughs> a grape tree, uh, inspired by cider. <laughs> That's good. That's good. The official they are the drink. Official drink. The official Brown drink. Grape, grape tree. And a much appreciated sponsor of the race that slows down the nation. <laughs> yes, Australia's richest horse suit race. Um, welcome to the show. If you haven't heard this before, but probably have because we've harped on about it a touch. But uh, <laughs> you've 50, definitely, it's definitely your first time if you've not heard this. 50 people in horse suits. They're going to be racing around uh, a country racetrack in Wedderburn. We have acquired the lease. By listening to this show, you are a Turf Club member, which means you get free ac- access. Yep. Head up there on Monday. Or down or across. Yeah. Or stay right where you are if you're in a very, very slim chance you happen to already be in Wedderburn. Um, because, Haim, our race will happen just after five, but a parade mm. in the town is organised. The, the town itself has closed down some roads. That'll be happening around 12.30, as you can see, all the people in their horse suits. It's our first time organising a professional sporting event, Hando. Yep. And when you have a sport, especially a sport you've sort of half created, which is horse suit racing, mm. it needs rules. It needs a code of conduct. Yep. When they invented even something like athletics running, hmm. they kind of probably had a rule book. Um, <laughs> yeah, they do. Just things like, you know, here's your lane. Yeah. Uh, Stay in it. You can't chuck a shoe at another competitor. All the stuff that you'd probably think about to go, how can I win? So we've got the official race rules here because a lot of people have been emailing in uh, with what they think are loopholes, but we think this clears it up yeah. for all the people inside horse suits running. Is there a copy, on Monday. A copy of these rules that? Do we have them up at Facebook or? I think the co- they've gone. Well, they've gone out to the races and they've had to sign it. True. So okay. Yeah. Yeah, everyone. So all the people, all the all the horses racing. Everyone in a horse suit has looked at these rules. Mm-hmm. But let's just do a final sweep of them yep. too. And thirteen ten sixty. If you reckon you can sniff a loophole here, mm. let us know. So two two person horse suits will be given a handicap start of two hundred meters. That's fine. We understand so, that. That's a rule. Yes. So um, we should point out there are different varieties of horse suits getting run in. Yep. And uh, a one-person suit versus a two-man suit. We thought the traditional two-man suit should be celebrated. It's also harder. Rule number... H- hence a 200-meter head start. Rule number two is important, though. Two-person horse suits must stay connected for the entire race, including crossing the fishing line, fin- finishing line, no split and sprint, which is a tactic yep. we would certainly use. Yep. And it's a lot easier... If you're in a two-person suit. One of the same rules applies to the Melbourne Cup. 
Yep, no split and sprint. <laughs> None of those horses are allowed to split up. And the jockeys can't get off the horse and run, because we all know jockeys <laughs> far faster than horses. Uh, all h- horse suits must be properly worn for the entire race, including crossing the finish line. I've got a question for you. So there's one of the horses, I think, is not a complete head mm-hmm. um, horse mask. It sort of just lacquer bands onto the face. Yep. So it's a plastic snout. Yeah. And there's some sort of some like weird horsey teeth and yep. uh, like the nostrils and stuff. If that person's running and they lift the mask up and pop it on their head. No. That's not allowed. just it ruins the spectacle for people and everyone will yell out, Hey, that's a person. That's not a horse. <laughs> yeah. And we don't want any of that on the day. So no, no. would we disqualify someone for that? Yep. yep. And the way you start I think we need the binoculars. Way you, the, the way you start is the way you meant to finish. Here's the part the tough one here. If you lose a hoof yeah. If, you know, like, are you stopping to get that or are you keeping it going? Because some of the hooves at the bottom, there's just like a kind of elastics over the top. I feel that's I fine. think if you lose anything by your head, <laughs> if you lose your horse's head or the horse's face, you do have to go back and collect that. Yeah, but it must be like if properly worn. If your tail time. falls off, much like the Melbourne Cup, if one of the horse's the tails, tails falls, falls off, off, they don't have to go back and get it. It um, hasn't. It's rare, like, to get spontaneous alopecia of the bum. <laughs> Um, but sometimes with a horse, you could just lose a tail. No physical contact or rough conduct between the horses. That's a big one. Horses must stay on the track at all times. That's... Any horse that leaves the track is going to be disqualified. We're looking at shortcuts there. No horse is allowed to intentionally block other horses. Yep. On a photo finish, and boy, I hope there's one. Yep. It'll come down to you and I to decide. And let's just change this to oh, everything's at Hamish and Annie's discretion. <laughs> <laughs> because someone, the buck has to stop with someone on the day. We'll try and be fair, yeah. but... We're going to yeah. have to. We ha- like there has to be someone in there that's making a call. No false starts allowed at all. If you yeah. false start, you're disqualified. Get out. You're out. Um, um, rule number twelve: no personal calls. Yeah. Um, you know it's <laughs> going to be a business day, so don't. <laughs> all right, one personal call <laughs> after hey, you've won. That's pretty much the rules. Thirteen ten sixty. Do you find any loopholes there? Like if you were we'll in also the race. talk to a few of the horses themselves to see how they've gone with preparation. Can we try and talk to the guy building a Trojan horse? Like, is um, that still happening? I think it's still happening. Jordan, you heard the rules. You think there might be a loophole? Yeah. What if the uh, two-man horse suit ran sideways? Uh, more than welcome to. As in, <laughs> as in, so they both face the front oh, right, and I see, twist, see. Them, twist themselves <laughs> Sorry, around. I thought yeah. you meant crabbing, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> which I don't see as an advantage. Okay, okay. you see, uh, they're both, both they're not one's not running into the back of another one. Yeah, they're running shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, yeah running I'll, side by side. We're gonna, that, that'll be disqualified. But I, and I think under the rules that everyone should remain as horse-like as possible. We, we, we actually <laughs> let's write that in, Jordan. That's, good. that's a great one, Jordan. We will let them let them know. We'll uh, we'll, we'll fine you for um, unhorseman-like behaviour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jacob, a loophole. Yeah, um, you guys did not say anything about drug testing. There could be... Yeah, that's some... fine with our race. 100% fine. <laughs> 100% fine, okay. Yeah, no, we're exactly. only at the amateur level here, yeah, Jacob, exactly. so yeah, um, yes. we've certainly got uh, got the blinkers on when it comes uh, we, to that one. We frown upon it, but... Uh, uh, no well, worries. It's certainly discouraged, we yeah. just don't have the science to... Uh, technology to be able to, yeah, to so apply to it. So it's certainly... you pumping yourself full of roids and lead up, all power to you, because we can't catch you. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean again, we uh, heavily frown upon it. No, no. Let it be known it's an honesty system. <laughs> <laughs> but with an honesty system, there are ways to exploit them. Stephen, uh, or Stephen, sorry, you. We talked to you first. Our, our international entrant, um, representing Ireland, uh, in, in a mammoth suit um, with your partner, Stephen. Uh, how have you been going? How's preparations? Well, first, ahoy, boys. Yeah, ahoy, ahoy, Stephen. Happy yeah. Friday, and to um, you. Uh, yeah, we've been going going pretty well. We went for a practice run uh, at Collingwood Track on Tuesday night. Oh, we wow. had a bit of an audience. Yeah. Um, a few people people asked us what time we clocked. Mm. Um, we we weren't we weren't quite as fast as as you, Andy, you and um, and, Jack. Oh, and Jack. Yeah, you were a bit faster, but uh, but we'll we'll carry on refining for yeah. the weekend. <laughs> and, uh, and now, did you try like you know your partner in the front, you in the back, or you in the front, her in the back? Did you m- mess around with the order? No, no, that's that. That's what we're gonna finesse over the weekend, and I think we'll have the uh, the magic formula. Stephen, who is who was at the front? You or Fiona? Uh, me, because I'm a bit, I'm quite a bit taller than Fiona, so we can sort of both stand upright and run. Um, yeah. If I go at the front, it works pretty well. But uh, huge advantage. I think that's yeah. Smart, Stephen. I'll <laughs> tell you why is because she's less likely to step on your heels with the shorter legs at the back. 
That'd just be a little bit of a tip. True. Yeah. And when you say, yeah. Stephen, when you say Collingwood track, do you mean as in like where the Collingwood Football Club trains? <laughs> no, uh, oh. Collingwood Athletics track. Okay, oh, get, uh, get special permission <laughs> from the club. <laughs> We've been working with some of the elite Eddie Australian McGuire. sporting teams. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't wait to see you, Fiona, and the Mammoth suit out there, mate. All the best with final preparations. Tom, this is a big one. Tom, first of all, ahoy and welcome. Hi, boys. Now, Tom, for people that have been listening to the lead up here, you're one of the heroes of this race because you won the... All villains. All villains, uh, but I was going to start with heroes first. (laughs) You won the stall gift many years ago, which is an amateur foot race. There was some allegations of uh, you pretending to be slower than you were in the lead up, so you got a hefty... Advantage. uh, Hefty handicap, and you haven't run since, Tom. How are you feeling heading into the race? Yeah, look, I was feeling pretty good uh, until uh, maybe Friday two weeks ago when you had the current stall gift winner on there. I thought I might have uh, had a chance over some of the other guys, but uh, well, Murray Goodwin's looking pretty good. So well, the training's th- been limited. Put it that way. It's got to be different, though, Tom. I mean, you're used to running 120 metres tops. How different is that to an 800-metre run? It might as well be a marathon. <laughs> yeah, OK. okay. Yeah. Well, you will be running as Rascal's Redemption, the yeah. horse... You never admitted to cheating in the stall gift, but there's certainly, um, certainly some will call you a rascal of the race. So this is Rascal's Redemption. Certainly a crowd favourite, Tom. Thank you very much. Look forward Good to luck, seeing mate. you, Winterburn. I, Mike, Mike, I understand, Mike, you were coming from North Queensland. Um, Pumper is the horse for you. Mike, talk us through it. I understand you're no longer running in the horse suit. Mate, I've had to pull my fake son, Jake, into the suit. Oh, like really? Now, Jake's a little bit fitter than me, but <laughs> we thought we thought after when we had the first interview, we thought, you know what? Surely we can smash Stephen and Fiona's friggin' mammoth. Yeah. Surely. <laughs> <laughs> we've got this in the bag. So we've done, we've done no training. Yep. But I worked out that my birthday is on the... Tw- well, not my pumper's birthday is on the 27th of August next year. Yep. So we're going to use the trip to meet other horses because he knows no other fake horses. All right. Oh, and invite them all to his birthday. Yeah, You've nice. never, he's never met a fake horse, horse so that's thing. beautiful. <laughs> uh, well, Mac, Nick, we can't wait to see you uh, coming down with the sole purpose of smashing, quote, that friggin' mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be epic on Monday, mate. Good luck. Be safe on the roads because it's a I bit of a trip for him. I'm pretty sure Mick's coming down from Queensland. Yeah, he's mm. going. He'll be at the pub Sunday night, Ando. So oh, yeah. we'll, we'll be able to have a sharpener. With Fantastic. Mick. Bit of a pre race sharpener. Um, all the details for the event HamishNaddy.com. Come along. We'll see you. Birds of Tokyo, Jess Malboy, and the race that slows down the nation's pants on Friday. <laughs> Our race that slows down the nation, Ham. Three days from now, exactly, Ando. The horses will be filing out to the start <laughs> line. Do you understand that? 50 horses will be filing out, <laughs> focusing, thinking, doing the Michelle Jenicky dance, just yeah. limbering up as Jess Mowboy sings the national anthem. Mm-hmm. We signed Jess Mowboy to sing the national anthem weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I read in the paper this morning. Mm-hmm. Hmm, interesting. Now, What's the that? horse race has also grabbed her, inspired by us. The Melbourne Cup. Oh, you said it, not me. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, spot on. They've copied us. And- well, I mean, what what is the word for when you do something first and then someone does exactly the same thing afterwards? Copy. They actually haven't copied the sando because we've got just Malboy singing the national anthem into Pony by Genuine, <laughs> yes. so all the horses can dance to warm up. So I don't. I think in that sense, if you're going along to the Emirates Melbourne Cup, still go. Yeah, because yes. there'll be a different spectacle different, yeah, exactly. at our racetrack. But good on Jess. Makes you understand that Jess has really got a weekend Week- cut out for her. <laughs> She's going to be flying down to Melbourne. The race that slows down the nation. We're so excited. We want to look back at the journey that's got us to here because Haim. It's been an amazing last five weeks. If you're thinking of coming, embrace the race. The event info's there. It's free. Get yourself to Wedderburn, wherever you are in the country. And it started as a simple seed of an idea. Mm. But really, the people of the people's show, they're the water. They're the sunshine. <laughs> Just five short weeks ago, Hamish and Andy were ruminating on the Emirates Melbourne Cup, the race that stops the nation. It seems a little bit irresponsible to just grind to a halt so quickly, to stop all of a sudden. The inertia is quite dangerous, isn't it? Very irresponsible. So what we'd like to do is the day before the Melbourne Cup, yep. hold the race that slows down the nation. So by the time we hit that Tuesday, <laughs> we've almost slowed to a walk. <laughs> and so it's a much <laughs> the more easiest. responsible stop yeah. on the Tuesday. Better on your knees. It's the people show, and the people wanted to come before we even had a track. Tiny, where are you calling from? Queensland, my friend. Tiny, how far would you be prepared to drive 
Say if we end up near Kalgoorlie. Would we go over to Western Australia, brother? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Wedderburn in Victoria put in this enticing pitch to be our venue. We've got a fabulous museum here of, of what an old supermarket used to be in the old days. Seems to me that it closed down. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 don't clear it out. That's a museum now. <laughs> What's this? This is the car yard museum. This is the butcher's museum. <laughs> so we rang the mayor of Wedderburn, Gavin Holt, to give him the good news. Hey, I think we won it. Yeah. <laughs> Track sorted, and our diverse field of 50 people in one and two person horse suits quickly came together. It's a one man horse suit. I can't see any place where someone can see out of the head. It looks like it's got oh. fly wire eyes. Is it that model? No, I've never been able to see out of it. I just run blind, mate. <laughs> Stephen, it's actually a mammoth suit, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, but I think horses are just a, an ancestor from mammoths, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So, <laughs> yeah, so officially, it? it's really it's just a very, very, very old horse. <laughs> Former wallaby. Pat McCabe. I don't know that I've worn an enormous horse head uh, running around, so that'll be a new experience. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Just when you thought you had been to the top level, now we find there's one level above that. <laughs> Jessica Melboy agreed to perform the national anthem and the birds of Tokyo came on board to not only perform, but also... Keyboard player Glenn actually wants to whack on a horse suit and race. To be honest, Glenn is by far the most athletic in the band, so he's our best chance. You picked he's our only hope, really. <laughs> <laughs> $2,000 was decreed as the prize money, along with some hampers of local produce. Local honey, mm-hmm. yes. eucalyptus, yep. yeah. wine. Great. Like a season pass to the supermarket museum. That's done. <laughs> <laughs> and Mayor Gavin got the ball rolling on a parade through town too. Oh, you should see the tractor I've got for you for the parade. Oh, great. Oh, you've got to start it with a shotgun cartridge. <laughs> We're coming up early. <laughs> we searched for a race caller. Big J auditioned. Right. And Andy raced around an athletics track in a horse suit to work out the handicapping. Oh, yes, keep your mate up. Oh, sh- <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this go. I'm so hot. Yes. And, uh, it's not an easy sport, is it? <laughs> it's going to be awful for him. We even made the local news. 50 people dressed as horses will run around Donald Park for the race that slows down the nation. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. It's all over Facebook and things like that. Can't wait until they do another movie. (laughs) The Towns of Bars even sometimes confusing Andy and I with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. (laughs) So much has gone into planning what will surely be a momentous day in Australian sport. Just three more sleeps until the race that slows down the nation. Oh, boys, the excitement. Building. There are good races. Gold and a world record. Ian Thorpe. Great races. But a champion becomes a legend. But Cody Debra's won it. And unforgettable races. Happy Lefty takes the lead. This is a famous victory. A magnificent performance. But would you believe it? None of these involved a horse suit. That's why this race is superior. It's not a case of man on animal, it's a case of man in animal. Wherever you are in Australia, don't stop what you're doing, simply slow it down and keep half an ear on this, the race that slows down the nation. Andy to drive you home wherever you are in the country just take a little bit off the pace because it's about to have the race that slows down the nation ham let's slow it down to 51 k's an hour if you're in a 60 zone let's slow it down to 32 k's an hour if you're in a 40 school zone <laughs> yeah it's true don't stop but start slowing it's pretty exciting ham to paint the picture for everybody I would say around about 5,500 people here, my last head count. People keep moving around, though, so it is kind of hard to tell. Stay still. We're trying to do a census. If you are here in Wedderburn, let's hear you. (laughs) We have taken over the small country track of Wedderburn Ham for the Australia's richest horse suit race. 50 people in horse suits will be doing 
a lap of this track, 800 metres, in around about an hour and 20 minutes' time. Unbelievable conditions here in Wedderburn. It's beautiful. It's a balmy 26 degrees. Mm. And we had a parade this morning, Ando. <laughs> All the horses and, and us on a tractor, followed by the crowd here, the thousands of people strong. Mm following the horses and as all the horses got here to the track yeah unanimously they all went geez it's a lot longer than you think <laughs> <laughs> we've got 50 terrified horses currently sitting on hay bales getting ready for the race it'll be in about an hour in time birds of tokyo are going to be performing a little later on everyone jess Malboy's coming up straight after this it's the race that slows down the nation live from the small country town of Winterburn. Thanks for being hey, with Driving you home. Welcome to Winterburn. Know your horses. Horse nine is Black Fish Eggs. The name is said to be inspired by retired Australian racehorse Black Caviar. Runner Kevin Alfaro Marquez hopes to mimic Black Caviar's undefeated record. My suit. Oh, speed suit. Lycra. Go on the speed. Low wind resistance. Coolest suit out there. Nervous, but nevertheless, ready to go. It's Horse 9, Black Fish Eggs. <laughs> we will feature a few more of the horses, everyone, over the next hour. Horse 9 of 50. The horses are currently off in their little stables area. Their trainers are with them. They're limbering up. They're getting ready for it, Ando. And it's funny, because a lot of coaches often say to people, you know, Walk the walk, don't talk the talk, don't talk yourself too much. No, no, no. Horse suit racing is the opposite. <laughs> Isn't it? You, just, you almost don't need to run. Yeah. It's a lot about bravado. <laughs> it's a lot about just just trying to psych out the other horses, and that's what they're doing. Mm. Um, amazing day down here in Wedderburn. You look up the hill, Ando, you've got people spread up on the hill too. Yep. They've covered the footy oval here. Footy oval's on the inside of the what is normally a harness racing track. We the did. local footy club, the Redbacks, yep. have done a great job we getting the... T- just always an easy cheer from the locals, isn't it? <laughs> oh, by the way, did I mention, go right back! Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be using several of those throughout the afternoon. <laughs> hey, um, one person that's going to ignite everybody later on, um, she confirmed to do our uh, National Anthem at our event, yeah. uh, and then the Melbourne Cup copied us and yeah. uh, invited her to do it for them tomorrow. So obviously this you know, is... She's such a great Aussie, yeah. she said yes. Yeah. She yep. said yes to the Melbourne Cup, even though I know she could smell from a mile away it was them copying us today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So largely a cooling down tomorrow for her <laughs> as she warms up today. Will you please welcome to the stage Jess Malboy, everyone. <laughs> Jess, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Go on, on that one. Yeah, we can. Um, Jess, there is a rumour that we heard a little earlier on. Can you that, confirm that, or deny it? We this? don't want to say it now to get peer group pressure from 4,500 people here. And do go to hamishdaddy.com or check out any of the social pipes, the hashtag The People's Race. But Jess, you're singing, you're about to sing This Ain't Love. Yes, I Later you're on, you're singing the national anthem into Genuine's Pony. That's right. Now, we know that's what you're doing. <laughs> Is there anything else that you were thinking of doing? You know what I'm doing, right? Well, tell I'm them. racing. She wants you to race. actually race. <laughs> Just racing, but I'm going to be in a horse suit. Well, you, you have so to you be. bought your own horse suit. Yeah, I you, did. You, you I brought it with me. You can't run as a civilian. You have to be a horse. <laughs> how exciting is this? We get here today, and Jess says, "How, you know, is it possible? I've bought my own horse suit. I'd like to race as well." Now, I don't think we've had it an event, Ham. Of any of the events I've seen, whether it's a Rugby World Cup or, or whether it's no. the Melbourne Cup, it's so hard to get a walk-up star. Someone do the national anthem. <laughs> And then run down and play the game. Oh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, to sing the national anthem and appearing at full forward, <laughs> Marina Pryor. <laughs> so that's what Jess Malboy is going to do, everyone. We are going to make sure then, Jess, after obviously you give Genuine, by, Pony by Genuine, well, all we, the gusto, an R&B song, because all of our horses later on in hour's time are going to be pumping and grinding to that. It's a way of limbering up before the big race. It's a medical dance, but Jess... What, what does your suit look like? What is it? Tell us about your suit. Well, it's um, brown. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yep, that's traditional. And I yep. have a, a darker brown tail. Yep. Um, What's the face like? That's the hard thing. Are you going to be able to can breathe? You breathe? Can you see? Well, it's, it looks like a pony. Ah, it good. Does, that does know? sound like a horse suit. And that's why I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I thought I'd sing pony. And are you running yeah. in these shoes? Like, and what? I will be. They're, they're, they don't match, but no. whatever. Trendy clothes. Doesn't clothes. matter. Well, as Jess, long as I can run, like, and you, as long as I can see where I'm going. Are you, are you comfortable with the 800 metre distance? Oh. I mean, it's 
You know what? I might fall a few times, but whatever. That this is so good. <laughs> I mean, Please encourage me. Yeah. Clap for me. Believe in me. Give me hope and encouragement. Well, it's had bookmakers scratching their heads now, Ham. How do they evaluate this field? Um, Jess Melboy, thank you very much for joining us. The single is This Ain't Love. It's available now uh, on, online on iTunes and also in stores. Jess, take it away. Thank it's Hamish from the race that slows down thank the nation. You, Thanks for We have this song for you. I've made it through, I've made it, I've made it, I've made it, made it through the night. Yeah! <laughs> 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 Thank you! Hey, Shady driving you home. Jess Malboy there performing for the Unbelievable. 5,000 strong team here, Ham. World team. World famous horse, uh, Jess Mowboy and and also now, wow, singer. Who knew she could sing so I know, well? normally she known is. for a horse racing. <laughs> normally uh, known for her horse suit racing. She will be running <laughs> next hour in the race that slows down the nation. Thanks, Thank you Jess. so much. Thank you so much, guys. Awesome work. Um, we'll see you a little later on. The national anthem performed wow. by Jess Mowboy's World Birds of Tokyo. Wherever you are in the country, welcome. make sure you get to hamishnady.com, hashtag the people's race to see how big this becomes. Hey, we arrived last night. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Stuck in traffic for 10 hours trying to get into Wedderburn. <laughs> yeah. It is like Bonnie oh, Woodstock here. Yeah. Woodstock feel. <laughs> the pub was, was pumping, would you say? I was. Yeah. It was. Um, a few people in horse suits. It's very strange to walk in and, and see horses... Uh, may have had a couple too many drinks. Just troughs of beer with horses' heads in them. <laughs> yeah. um, but still smiling from ear to ear because yeah. it's a stitched-on smile. We've, um, um, we've seen some people that were at the pub here in the crowd today and we've also seen some people not make it to, the, <laughs> to, to today's show that were at the pub last night. Um, and the overwhelming thing for the horses, it seems is it's going to be hot out there for them. It's, it's going to be a hot race, and it's going to be a long race. It's mm. an 800-metre race if you're a one-man horse suit. It's 600 mm. to 700 metres if you are in a two-man horse suit because mm. you do get a bit of a head start. That sounds fine as a number, but when you do get here to this glorious uh, track here at Wedderburn that's normally used for harness racing, yep. you just realise that when you're out the back running on sand with 10 kilos of carpet on your body, <laughs> yeah. it's going to seem like you're a long way off the finish line. We met at the pub earlier on to this morning uh, because we had a parade, but we also wanted to chat to all the horses and their trainers. Some have come from all, they've all come from corner, all corners of, uh, of Australia, Ham. We pick up the action here when we, we are in the pub. We are standing behind the Bay Marie. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to run the horses through a few of the rules sure. and then get an insight into a few of the horses and their journey so far. First of all, guys, put your hooves together for yourselves. Unreal. <laughs> Mostly the trainers clapping because uh, everyone in a horse suit can't exactly. use their hands. And they're exhausted because it's so hot. Props to everyone for sacrificing things like comfort and visibility <laughs> more often than not in the pursuit of making a great horse suit. Mm. It's going to be an unbelievable race. It's so stoked to see everybody in here. You Maybe don't have to stay in your outfit for five hours. Because yeah. um, some people are trying to carry 900 kilograms of carpet on their head. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Gigi. <laughs> yeah, just a sad <laughs> nod. I mean, your face is smiling, <laughs> but your knees are going weak. <laughs> You guys absolutely are the stars today, and uh, and Hayman and I can't thank you enough. It's going to be great, like we said, yeah. There's no need to push and shove. It's a bloody big track. There's plenty of room for everyone. Uh, there obviously is uh, an advantage to running the inside line, yeah. but um, let's face it, for some of you guys, it's not going to matter. So. <laughs> First of all, name and horse. Redback Ranger. Robbie here had a fair few too many at the pub last night. Are you the captain of the footy team, Rob? Yeah, I am, yes. Was it a captain's innings last night? Yeah, it was, yes. Good knock. <laughs> Bought up the ton. <laughs> hey, Corey, were you keeping an eye on him? Were you meant to be keeping him in tow? Yeah, you meant to. <laughs> Captain usually leads from example. <laughs> ah, well, leading from the front's out, leading from the floor's in. Yeah. <laughs> um, Definitely. Are you worried about making it around, or you think you, you, Confident. you've confident? you played under these yeah. circumstances well, before? Is, that, is this your normal prep, Rob? Yeah, normal prep. <laughs> <laughs> Friday night before footy. And, and how did the Redbacks go this year? We'd won four flags in a row, then I got appointed captain, and we come second last. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle the Boss has been dubbed in by her whole company to run in the race. She's come down from North Queensland to be Mama Tank. we got two motorhomes, a caravan. We had a full convoy of vehicles. We've we had everything. We've, we've run out of petrol. We've had been caught in a hailstorm. 
like, I'll be honest, some of my members of my staff that have come with me were mooning other members of staff in other motorhomes on the way. I thought that was a little bit unprofessional. It is. It has been um, ranked as one of the highest yeah. forms of team bonding, which is mooning yeah. another Look, company. I'm not going to mention any names. That's actually... Who were you the mooner? Yes. Ah! <laughs> Fantastic. Got it she was doing it to some of the... <laughs> I'm really embarrassed. This is this is the whole... W- and it's early, guys. Now. It's very early. Just gone midday. <laughs> We're here with Harry Trotter. It's and it's early, guys. Now. It's very Just early. Just gone midday. <laughs> We're here with Harry Trotter. It is a full-size two-person pinata suit. God, Fraser and Reese are inside. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're a bit warm. Total cost of suit? Um, I think it was about 60 bucks. 60 Ooh. bucks? That's pretty good for a horse pinata. Yeah. Well, hopefully kids don't run onto the course and beat you up. Yeah. You get full of lollies. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what comes out? <laughs> Just a broken human. <laughs> How much of the, you know, 150 to 200 metre head start do you reckon you guys will need? I reckon we'll be all right. I really? think we turned it up at the end. Have you done any trials in the suit? This is the first. First. We had a run at work the other day holding a shovel and a um and a broom. What, why? Just for weight. <laughs> just, just for sort of distancing, like running hope, near each other. I hope your boss walked past and went... Yeah, no, he was there. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> so the race that slows down the nation. And, Haim, we've got to go to a little bit of a break now, but set your watches, everyone. Just roughly, because we don't know what time it's going to be, but an hour from yeah. now, that's just, just in the ballpark that you watch us. <laughs> the benefit of only having one race uh, on the program. You don't really need to run the schedule because you're not, you're not holding anyone. But loosely an hour from now, in this beautiful track, in this beautiful day, in front of this stunning crowd. Yeah. 5,000, 5, 6,000 people. I mean, easily the biggest crowd we've ever had. At a horse suit race. Yeah. At a horse suit race. It's a PB yeah. for us. It's a PB <laughs> for you guys. Tamish Nandy, driving you home. Hey, we are in the small country town of Wedderburn. If you're a first-time listener to the show, welcome. Welcome. But it would seem weird for you. But we are at Australia's richest <laughs> horse suit nah, race. Nah, we do this every Monday. Yeah. You're going to love listening to the show. Every Monday we're in Wedderburn <laughs> doing a horse suit race. <laughs> <laughs> Over to our left is the stables. Uh, it's, you know, kind of a, a 30-metre yeah. marquee full of hay bales where our horses have been hanging out. A few of them we discovered have hay fever, so it's perfect preparation <laughs> for an 800-metre race. But, hey, we want to concentrate on you guys, the audience here, 5,000 strong that have come out. And growing. And growing. Obviously, if you listen to this show, you're a member of the Turf Club uh, here, and you guys all used your memberships to get in. Let's see them. Yeah, a lot of people holding up their membership cards. (laughs) That guy's got a big one. (laughs) Yeah. That's a fake. (laughs) Um, Spotted spotted a mile away. I'm sorry, we should point out they're invisible for people listening. Yes, they're they're mime cards. And, uh, And anyone listening, wherever you are, around the country you're obviously a member of the turf club and we need your help for the next bit to pick fashions of the field yeah for the other races whether it be derby day or even at royal ascot fashions of the field there's a lot of scrutiny i don't like it ando no it's a bit it's a little bit judgy isn't it they make you stand up there like a piece of meat everyone judges you it's Mm. not on because everybody's beautiful ando and everyone should be able to win yeah exactly and that's why we've taken a different tact here at the people's (laughs) race It's going to be a complete game of luck for fashions in the field. (laughs) So what we're going to ask is everyone in the audience here to stay still from now. I'm essentially going to be remote controlled. Someone call in now, 131060, if you're listening, wherever you are in Australia. Give us a call, 131060, and then just direct me blindly through the crowd. And using fate as a system, I will land on the person that has won fashions on the field today. Hamish (laughs) is essentially a human skill tester. And joining us is Jamie. Jamie, whereabouts are you, bud? I'm from Yarrawonga. Oh, sorry, sorry, Jamie, a girl. <laughs> I was being very blokey with you. Jamie, lovely to speak to you. You're from Yarrawonga. Now, Jamie, the way this is going to work is Hamish is somebody or somewhere already out in the crowd. Hamish, you out there? Yes, mate. How are you going? Very, um, very good. Just down uh, halfway between the stage and the stables mm-hmm. um, in the thick of it. God, everyone looks good at ground level, Ando. And um, we thought they looked good from the stage. It's stunning. Um, what we're doing here is fashions of the field. We feel like... You can't lose down here, mate. You just can't lose. <laughs> we feel like all the people that normally run these fashions of the field, whether it's Royal Ascot, the Kentucky Derby or Melbourne Cup, it's very exclusive and you have to put a lot of effort and, in. And you have to register. And you have not, to register. Not with ours. Ours is a surprise fashions on the field. No, as two guys, Ham, that love a lack of effort. We've yeah. lived by it. Um, today, it's all about luck. So, Jamie, you're going to control Hamish. All you have to do is tell him to walk... For instance, pick how many metres you, would you like him to walk yeah, to begin with? Jamie, how many steps do you want me to take? Uh, take 20 steps to the right. 
Okay. To the ro- oh, no, I'm going to hit a wall, Jamie. So, um, okay, sorry. My I, nose is so how about straight? How about straight? straight? Go straight. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Walking through someone's campsite. Ten. What's your name? Oh, hi, I'm Angela. Sorry, Angela, I'm walking through your campsite. <laughs> 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Sorry, I'm about to walk on someone's child. What's your child's name? Sophie. That's Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Sorry. Yeah, and 19, Sophie 19, 20. Got it, Ando. 20. I, okay, Jamie. so let's go a right hand turn and name the amount of steps, Jamie. Five. Oh, okay. I'm so. going to, and, and I'm going to, well, we're going to do it, but I'm going to land straight in picnic territory. Okay. Um, thanks for moving. What's your name? Lucas. Thanks, Lucas. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yep. So close to hitting the Savoys. Just <laughs> missed them. <laughs> If you've just tuned in, uh, we are picking our fashions of the field randomly, and Jamie is, been, on, is on the phone controlling Hamish like a giant skill, skill tester. I've been offered a warm zooper duper, Jamie, so <laughs> someone's trying to bribe me down here at, at the street level. Okay, Hamish, a left hand turn now, and Jamie. Do you want a left hand turn, Jamie? What do you want? Yeah, but first you need to spin around a couple of times. Okay, okay. Make, make him <laughs> date. <laughs> okay, All you right. just say stop. Hamish is spinning. Now you can stop. Okay, okay. how many steps? 15. Okay, after 15. Okay. <laughs> That's all right, I'm going to go straight through a guy. One, two, what's your name? Rob. Rob, stay cool. Uh, <laughs> two, three, right over Rob's shoulder. Four, yep, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How are you going? Hi. Yep, good, good. <laughs> two, three, yep, done at 15. 15. Jamie, is this the person? Is the person in front of Hamish, or do you want one more go? Jamie? Oh, uh, what do we think, crowd? Well, <laughs> oh, no, it's up to you, Jamie. You, this is a skill she's, tester. She's really, she's really loving the power, isn't she? Um, all right, Haim. Um, right, let, let's, let's just stop. Let's be fair to the person where he stopped. Okay. Well, um, the, can I just explain what's going on down here, Jamie? Um, I was looking at a young man, um, but now a gorgeous young lady has what can only be described as crashed my field of view. <laughs> she's 10 centimetres from my face. What's your name? Charlie. Hayley, um, I really feel like you're aggressively trying to win fashions on the field. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and is this your daughter or just a child you've bought to bribe me with? Both. Okay. <laughs> um, April. Hi, April. Hi. Yeah, great. I mean, who's this guy behind you? Kane. What's that? Kane. Kane. Kane, hop up. I mean, Chaley, you have got an amazing outfit on. You've got even got a fascinator. Hmm. Kane. You know, you're in shorts and a tee. Yep. Um, how long did it take you to get ready this morning? A solid three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Should we put it to an audience vote? Who thinks Chaley? Yeah! Who thinks Kane's got it? Yeah! Kane, your body won fashions on the field! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and you're a goddamn hero! <laughs> um, I like to thank my mum yep. and my family. <laughs> Took a lot of hard work to get here. Is that the beginnings of a Movember moustache? Moustache um, or just a bit sloppy? Yeah, till school starts. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you've won a warm Zupa duper. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Kane. Well done, Hamish. Hey, head back up here. Let's have... came second. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at another one of the horses. Know your horses. Horse 13 is Washington. A two-person horse suit made up of husband and wife team Sylvie and Greg. Sylvie made the costume herself. It's quite difficult. Yeah, a lot of goes at it, but got there in the end. Looks like a horse. We've got a little secret weapon at the end, which we might deploy and we might not, depends how we're going. The first strategy was to try and win, but I think now we're just trying to finish. It's Horse 13, Washington. The People's Race jumps after 5pm today. Live on Hamish and Andy. We well, welcome to the stage a few of our competitors, everyone, as we look out at a crowd of 5,000 people travelling from all over Australia. And thank you for being here through your radios as well. Joining us first, Pat McCabe, ex-Wallaby. Thank you very much for coming, my friend. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Patty. <laughs> um, now, now, Patty, your suit of choice here, I mean, you're representing the ACT Brumbies, yep. obviously, uh, the union team there. It's not the easiest thing to run in. Have you done much training or practice in it? It's not. I, I tried it on for the first time last night. Yep. Uh, the head, might as well be an anvil just sitting on the top of my head. <laughs> well, and these sort of folk at it us aren't, uh, aren't doing a lot for me either. You look, it's even difficult for you to get your arm <laughs> to your face. Like, it's a fairly constrictive suit. Yeah, it's, it's not built for speed. I think it's built for children abusing the mascot. So, <laughs> see how it goes. Built for protection. Yeah, um, mate, you retired recently from the Wallabies. They had, they had such a great campaign in the World Cup. Were you up early to watch it uh, yesterday? 
Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, it was so awesome to see. They, they played incredibly well and, and just missed it at the end. But, yeah, very, very proud of them. Now, if you were still in the team, if you were still in the Wallabies, you would have been over there at the World Cup Did you just, and you wouldn't have been able to run today. So is there a part of you just going, thank God I don't represent Australia anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the tiniest part. <laughs> no, 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 thank you, thank you. So you could be here today. What a, ju- what a beautiful selfless sacrifice. Uh, <laughs> Pat retired from, uh, from Rugby Union because uh, you kept breaking your neck. Uh, now, do you, how, how, do you, how, how do you feel about wearing a giant horse head? Oh, no. it's good well, we should have got some medical advice, maybe, but it should it's, be right. It's good rehab, though, isn't it? Yeah, Don't absolutely. they recommend you do head weights? <laughs> yeah, something like that. This would be a good test. Well, a, a lot of the crowd favourite. Number 30, everyone in the race. Ladies Pat McCabe, ex Wallaby. Thank you very much. Absolute crowd favourite. And we'll move along. Thanks, Patty. To... We've got a, uh, a partnership here. Love brought these two together. A mammoth, a mammoth suit has confirmed their love for each other. We've got Simon Fee. Uh, so Stephen and Fee. How, how are you, Steve? Uh, awesome. Awesome. Now, we noticed you two as a couple doing a bit few trials earlier on in the day. Uh, yeah, just, uh, I guess, uh, knocking out a few of the kinks in our system <laughs> yes. so that we're ready to go. And, what, and how confident are you? I mean, do you, do you rate your chances? Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, you guys are a crowd favourite. You've got a lot of support here. <laughs> um, the thing I like about you two is even under the suit, you've couple dressed, <laughs> which is so <laughs> sweet. you both got the pink yeah. T-shirts on. <laughs> Do you think it's been good for your relationship to run in, in a mammoth suit? Uh, yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah. Well, I it's recommend it to everyone. I mean, Fee, Fee Steve's doing a lot of talking for you. How do you feel? <laughs> it's really been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So for any couples out there who want to strengthen a relationship, one uh, final question uh, for you here, Steve. How did you decide front and back? Uh, pure, purely on height. Well, actually, yeah. well, the height and then performance, a bit of a performance testing. Yeah. Just that you saw. So, is, you saw. Is, so, is the, so is the faster person in the front or is the faster, faster person in the derriere? Front. Oh, yeah. well, well, okay. So now we don't want to mess around with the team <laughs> unity before you have the race. Can we just say, I mean, for you guys are actually in this. It's forty minutes away. I, for one, and Ando's the same. Way. We're just jumping out of our skin. Everybody here cannot wait to see this race and how it pans out. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. The atmosphere. It is ridiculous. Everybody is so pumped for this race. Does it seem like a long way? around the track or are you, are you looking forward to eating it up it looks massive it looks really <laughs> yeah. massive yeah it's much bigger when you first step out there thank you guys so much guys Stephen and Fee You're inside gonna the mammoth very very possibly today's winners we don't know you don't know who's going to take out the race that was make it so exciting Zippo is their name they're number four if you want to listen out to them later on it's Hamish and Andy Know your horses. Horse 16 is Donkey. Donkey is aptly named because he is less of a horse suit and more of a donkey suit. I have checked out the track, had a walk on it before. Um, it's looking a bit gravelly. Hopefully we can get you know a good start and not much slippage. No training. I've been playing too many video games, but hopefully I can get up. <laughs> looking forward to a great race. It's Horse 16, Donkey. We got... Five and a half, six thousand people here, more and more turning up by the minute to witness history as Australia's richest horse suit race is about to be run. But Ando, if there's one man's <laughs> job we don't envy, it's the man that joins us on stage uh, in a moment, and that's Matt, the race caller. Yeah. We do want to have a word to him, but before we do, Matt, we want to meet some very special people. Yes. Um, up, up the hill is the very identical person tent. Now... All day long, people have been turning up to the tent saying, I look like a celebrity, please let me in for my one free grape tree inspired by grapes, not a cider, delicious drink. Inspi- um, inspired by cider. Inspired yeah. by cider, very heavily inspired by grapes, made of grapes. We all know it and love it. Every horse gets it's a bottle. It's drink of the carnival. Yeah. Drink of the carnival. They've all been turning up to get their free grape tree, Ando. Yeah. Now, I'm going to bring one of the older one of our lookalikes on stage, and I'm going to bring him on first because... Andy, you don't know who he's meant to look like. No. But there is absolutely no doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, David, David Boone. Boone. <laughs> you look a lot like Booney. It's been said once or twice, eh, hey, Andy? <laughs> this, what an honour. Could we have picked a better person? Same initials, but lack the performance both on and off the field. What's your, what's your name? Darren Borg. Oh, it's, it's so close. Can we just have a big cheer for Booney for coming? We absolutely feel you could make it, Booney look alike. You are a spinning image of it. Did you know? I mean, part of the game today was people rock up to this tent 
and if they don't look enough like the person, the doorman would send them away. You knew that you were getting in, didn't you? He didn't know who Booney was. He didn't know who Saddam Hussein was. <laughs> I love, I've got, I've got Saddam as, as a backup. The best thing about you is it's the 2nd of November here and I know you only started the moustache yesterday. It looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Darren Ham. Great who, work. Who is the second one? All right, I'll, I'll let this be a guessing game. Okay. Our second, he almost might need to take his hat off. Yeah. Um, and oh. Uh, Jeez, walking out. We've had a Ronald McDonald. That's false. I think that's just a go at the fact he's got ginger hair. I'm going to say Michael Cera. <laughs> was he let in? Think slightly. Was he Luke McGregor? Okay. <laughs> what about Prince William? <laughs> Prince William. <laughs> What's your name? Prince Harry. Prince, Prince Harry. Harry. Sorry, Harry, Harry, Harry. I mean, he's but you sad. do look a lot like Prince Harry. I mean, has you, have you got that before? Oh, uh, no. Uh, I mean, I called you. I try, I, I try not to. You I called you Prince Williams. <laughs> I tell you, what's your name, sorry, bud? Oh, uh, Ryan. They must have dropped the bar of letting people. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, looking, you're better looking than Harry. Yeah, I, I thought so too. But um, yeah, I, I was pretty. I was trying pretty hard just to get into the VIP section. So yeah. I, I worked my way in there. I did was, you get your free drink? I thought I did. Yeah. Okay. yeah I was, <laughs> Well done, Prince Harry, everyone. Said like a true prince. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, um, Harry. Thanks. Champion. Let's have a quick chat to this fellow. Um, for those following this, it's whole... another. It's another look like it's a skinny Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those following the race closely, we put out last week whether anyone had the ability to call this race because the horse call, the racing call, is very important. Matt, you won out. You do call races. I do, yes, who I do. do you, who do you call for normally? I uh, work for RSN, the racing and sport radio station in Melbourne. Yep. Are you? How are you feeling ahead of this race? It's got to be difficult. Yeah, I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm not well, going to lie. It's, it was seemingly impossible to call this race. What? I mean, everyone's got numbers, but they're on the front of their shirts. They're going to be miles away from you. There's no real colours. What are the other things that stand out as making this a difficult race to call versus a regular horse race? Oh, the most difficult part is that there's 50 horses. I've <laughs> only called 12. Yeah. So and, and they're not going to be too close to each other. <laughs> no, they're not. Um, and, and, and so how have you gone about trying to familiarise yourself with 50 different horse suits? Oh, to be honest, I haven't done a lot yet, mm. but I'll head upstairs now and okay. do practice. Well, and... why don't we let you go, Maddie? because it's only in half an hour. So. <laughs> Plenty of time. Yep. Uh, well, Matty, you will be the voice of the race that slows down the nation. Our, Hamish and my mics are going to be turned off. It's going to be completely over to you. And everyone that couldn't make it here are going to be relying on you for this call in around about half an hour's time. So best of luck, my friend. Thank you very much. Cheers, buddy. Thanks, that, everybody, our race caller. Hamish, it is the race that slows down the nation. We are in the small country town of Wedderburn, 20 minutes away from a 50-person horse suit. The crowd has swelled. We think as many as six or 7,000 people here. How are you feeling, Wedderburn? <laughs> <laughs> Do go to HamishAndy.com. If you're out in the crowd or here, hashtag the people's race, or you can follow it from wherever you are in the country, Ham. Just as follow we look the... across at the stables, yeah. the trainers are getting and helping their particular athlete, athletes get inside the horse suits. This is it, Ando. This is the moment. We're 20 minutes away from the race. The horses are nervous. You can see a lot of, a lot of manes are shaking, a lot of <laughs> nostrils flaring in the stables, and a lot of sweat dripping from the bottom because <laughs> it's very hot in there. And a lot of guys wondering if they shouldn't have started drinking at about 10 a.m. Horse, Still, it's horse, going to be amazing. Horses have come from all over the country, Ham. There is also a local running or well, two or three, in fact, there's hometown heroes in a single horse suit and, uh, and, and the Redbacks as well. They're running of, in a two-man horse now, suit. I don't know if this is going to work, but there's a couple of guys from the uh, Redbacks footy club. Hey, go Redbacks, yeah? <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> Hamish Just is, a slam dunk. <laughs> been enjoying <laughs> that Haven't power. missed one all day. <laughs> but we're asking on, on 131060, wherever you may be in Australia right now, do you know someone running in the race? Do you want to fire out one last hero message to them? Already, there are a couple of thousand people lining the rails here, everyone getting in their position for the race, and the horses need a G up, Ando. 131060, if you have any loose link, or maybe you're close to any of the horses running in the race, call us now. Final chance for a hero fax. <laughs> another, another advantage our horse suit race has over actual horse racing is our horses can hear you <laughs> and understand you. <laughs> we asked on 131060, do you know someone running in the race? And joining us is Murray. Murray, whereabouts are you from, Murray? Uh, I'm in Canberra. In Canberra at the moment, obviously glued to your radio. Which horse are you supporting? Uh, horse number 48, Hey Bernie. Hey Bernie. And how do you yeah, know Hey Bernie? 
Uh, we uh, went to school together. And back then, was he just a normal horse? Did you have any inkling he'd grow up one? He was a uh, one? young stallion looking for a <laughs> break. Well, today's the day, possibly, for number 48 as we prepare here and even more people start to hug the rails. It's getting busy out there. Yeah, two-person horse. Wish them. Would you have one? Any final words, Murray, for Jake uh, and James yeah. who are inside A. Bernie, number 48? Yeah, boys, bring it home to spend that $2,000 just downstairs food. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Thank you, Murray. <laughs> Estella joins us. Estella, where are you calling from? From Meadow Heights in Melbourne. Okay, Estella. Who do, nice you, one. Who, who you, going who do you know, Estella? Number 33, Passing Wind. Passing Wind. I understand yes. that's also... <laughs> yeah, she's excited. I understand that's also a two-person horse suit. Nick and Stuart are in that that's one. correct. Yes, yes. Now, <laughs> and, and what are they like in real life? Because out here they're celebrities. I mean, you can't get near them. Yep. Um, the crowd's going nuts for them. But in real life, are they good guys? Oh, they're so funny. So I wish them all the best because <laughs> they are such a crack-up. What's your relation to the boys? <laughs> they are my son, Gian's best mate. Good, Estella. Well, well done. Great well, hero message. Thank you. Everyone crowded around the, the wireless at Estella's place. Um, Rebecca, you have got a message for Slowly McSpeel. Yes, just run faster than your name. Yes, how do you know Slowly McSpeel? Uh, we're good mates and I went to school with him. Nice one. Uh, he obviously loves the fact that, uh, although you couldn't be here, you've come in with the hero facts. Grace. Grace, um, Grace, who would you like to send a shout out to? Which horse? Uh, Abe, Abe Bernie. Another, another one. Another one for Abe Bernie. Bernie. Certainly a crowd favourite. Well, how do you know Abe Bernie? I'm Jake's mum, and he's got my car, so he could drive down there. <laughs> it's a rags to riches story. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for offering up your car, Grace. Finally, we're looking after him. He's definitely he's not he's behaving himself, not drinking. Everything's fine. Seb, you've got <laughs> Seb, you've got a final message. Who for? Um, for the specialist, Amy. Uh, Amy sorry. The specialist, yeah. And how do you know the specialist? Uh, I do athletic fitness. All oh, right, so yeah, she she's quick. Can, so give us a bit of insight into, into her, her, how good she is at athletics. We've, we've seen her. Her suit is like skin tight, so it looks like she's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. She's, got, uh, she's coming off some good form as well in the, um, in the actual athletics, not actually in the horse suit. So I don't know how the transition will be. Georgina uh, is. Georgina is her name. I love Thank them. you very much, I love Seb. Guys, if there was a, betting... Got a bit of mail. She's coming off good she's form, coming off good form. Thank you, Seb. Yeah. And finally, we've got time for one more. Claire, tell us who you're, who you're backing. Backing Katrina Poulton from Riddles Creek Primary School on Well Ridden. Yep. I teach her son, Todd. And Well Ridden <laughs> came to visit our class on Friday and Riddles Creek Primary School is backing him all the way. Oh, good stuff. Thank you very <laughs> much, Claire. I bet the, ki the kids would have been just blown away to see a real-life horse suit athlete in the flesh. <laughs> yes, Very inspiring for them. Grow up, work hard. One day you two could run in a horse suit <laughs> here at Wedderburn in a future race that slows down the nation. 2,000 people, Ham, have now lining the track. They're making their way to the best position. The hill we look upon... There is a hill that looks down uh, underneath the Grape Tea Grandstand. There is a crowd now of at least 7,000 7, at least here being conservative. Normally with Lion Radio, but we don't even have to today. <laughs> like, normally we just, there could only be 10 people who just crowded around a microphone. But do go online. Uh, go to hamishandy.com. Hit up our Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, whatever your social media pipe is, pick your pipe, go and feed from it. Um, feed your eyes from the pipe. The hashtag the people's race. Um, two and a half thousand people now man the hill. They're looking at the different horse suits, uh, people in horse suits, yep. line up. The, the one people, not man horse suits, ham obviously at the line and an advantage, a head start for the two people horse suits okay. all the way down, uh, you know, some 200 metres further down around the bend. Only now are Andy and I realising that we made everyone, every horse that's in the race has a trainer, a buddy that came with them that's wearing a fluoro vest. I actually just remembered where, I don't know if this was deliberate, I think we got that idea from Greyhound Racing. <laughs> just, always the dogs have a, have a trainer with a vest on behind them, so we've got 50 trainers with their vests on, placing their horses now across the track, because if you've been listening, a lot of the horses have incredible difficulty seeing yep. or moving. It's going to be, it's anyone's guess how 800 metres is about to play out here. Hey, um, it's time for us to have a look at all the horses in this race. There's no better do it than the man and the voice of sports himself, Mr. Stan Sandy Roberts. Hi, Sandy Roberts here with a special edition of Know Your Horses. 
You know, when a sporting event like an AFL Grand Final or the Olympics come along, it's common knowledge in the industry that I usually only learn two or three names and just sort of bluff the rest. But when an event as important as the race that slows down the nation happens, I know that if I'm to be respected in sporting circles, I have to know every detail about every horse as the eyes of the nation turn to the people's race. For instance, if you were to say, what's so special about Horse 10? I instantly know that that's Chris from Balmain in New South Wales and he's running as a seahorse. If you were to ask me about Horse 43, I'd tell you that's good old Henry Osling, whose horse name is Ocean of Fire, an outfit that mysteriously consists of a Power Ranger riding an inflatable horse. And I just happen to have a Power Ranger suit. My red does make me go faster, very, very streamlined. And if you said, who's this? Mate, we were pretty keen to smash that mammoth. That's all we want to do. If we can do that, we can do our country proud. Come on, guys. Give me a harder one. That's Mick Pope from McKay in Queensland. What a race we have ahead of us. If you asked me for a favourite, I couldn't give you one name. I'd throw Georgina running as the specialist at you. I'd throw ex-Wallaby Pat McCabe running as Brumby Jack at you. And I'd have to include alleged stall gift cheat Tom. You put it in your own words. I cheated. I cheated. You cheated in the stall gift? I cheated in the stall gift. <laughs> I never know if we say that you cheated or you're just alleged, but if it's coming in from the horse's mouth. Well, <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> There's so many champions in this field. I love each and every one of these great athletes, and I simply wouldn't be anywhere else but Wedderburn today for the people's race. And that's why I'm here, walking around in the crowd and wearing a disguise. Unfortunately, not able to get on the microphone live as it's my day off. But I'm definitely here. How's this weather, huh? What a day here in Wedderburn. What a day for Australian sport. Hey, Mr. Andy, we are driving you home, everyone. And we're doing it from the small country town of Wedderburn. Hamish, you are... 200 metres or so away from me. Can you hear me, Ham? Yes, mate. I'm over here with the two-man horse suits. I'm at Everybody's the... raring to go. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold them back like, like a team of dragons here. I feel like Khaleesi when the dragons go rogue. Well, they've got to be dancing first, remember. <laughs> yes, I know. They're wherever, fired up. Wherever you are in the country, you're about to hear history being made. We are sitting here, and I'm looking at all the one-man horse suits, Ham. It just looks incredible. Some of them are already holding their heads up, which does not bode well for having to run 800 metres in it. And obviously, the sun has come out to bead down on them right when it hurts the most. Ham, Jessica Malboy joins us back on stage. Jess, are you there? I am. I'm so dreading this. I don't know what I've got myself into. <laughs> Jess, you've probably got the hardest job of anyone on the track <sighs> except for our race caller who's almost got an impossible one. <laughs> You're about to sing the national anthem. At, that, at a point towards the end, you'll transition perfectly into the hit R&B song Pony right. by Genuine. That's at that right. stage, all the horses will dance sexily, uh-huh. very sexily to loosen up their hips. That's right. Um, After that, Jess, then you have to get in your horse suit because you've elected to run and fight your way through a few thousand people to the start line. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I'm ready, though. I'm pumped. Well, unlike the Melbourne Cup, Ham, the Emirates Melbourne Cup, all our horses over here are upstanding, and a lot of them are going to have their hands on their hearts. Yeah. As, Jess, you take away the national anthem into Pony by Genuine. Yes. Go for it.
Jess. You Let's know hear what it, to Jess. Do. This next song I want to dedicate to, to all the ponies and all the horses out there. Yeah. Waiting at the line. That's right. <laughs> you ready to move them, Rip? Oh, sorry, those hips. Yeah. So. <laughs> you got two sets of hip hold. I got two well, sets of hips. Go. Let's break horse. it down a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, warm it up. Yeah, grind it. Hey! Here we go. I'm just a bachelorette. I'm looking for a partner. Uh, someone who knows how to ride without even falling off. Gotta be compatible Take me to my limits Girl, when I break you off I promise that you won't want to get upset You're only Let's do it, you know it Ride it My pony My shadows Waiting Coming John, let me hear you say If you're Hamish Jess Malboy Ham. How are you going, Ando? I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. God, that was some good dancing. It was great dancing. All the horses did exactly as they were told, grinded it out. Hey, Jess Malboy, I could see her from where my vantage point, literally finished the last lyric, ripped off her jacket, and she's charging off to a horse suit. This is incredible, Ando. It over here, time. Over here at the over here, Ando, at the two-person horse suit mm. um, start line. Just some phenomenal grinding. I mean, they've got more hips per horse than the one person that horse. That's an advantage. It's an advantage. Yeah. And you could feel it over here. Like they're already, <laughs> they're already have taken out the championship for the dancing. But now, they're raring to go. Everyone's suited up. A few of them were still a little bit out of their suits when I got over here because of heat. But everyone's yeah. suited up. They look phenomenal. We're let's, ready. Let's set the tone then, everyone. How, by it's, the way, and yeah. I know we're sort of semi-stalling to, to uh, let Jess get over there. Is she there? No, it's anticipation. Here she comes. She's got God. a horse suit on already, actually. God, she's, she's making good. her way through the crowd. Should we, should we see how Matt's feeling? Let's go up to Matt. He's our race caller. Matty, can you hear us? I can. I can indeed. Maddie Matt, sits, what's it like? What does it look like from up there? Matty sits three stories up, guys, in a race call tower. He's just in front of the finish line. Matty, how does it look from up there? It's incredible. They've, they've come from far and wide for the greatest horse suit race in history. <laughs> and, and they look a million dollars... Um, and they're and they're they're trying to they're fighting for a, a real fraction of that two thousand and a hamper. <laughs> Jess has just joined us, Ham, on the front line. She's number forty-seven, Beatrice Beauty. She's very excited at the front. So I believe, as much as the stalling has been fun, we might actually have to start this race soon. I have never, in all our years of broadcasting, been so excited, Ando. This looks phenomenal what a day mm. what a moment australia is about to experience i'm ready oh. are you ready down there ando everyone seems to be set over here as the last of the horses get into the stalls we got about we got 38 with you i think we got a dozen up to uh, about 150 meters around the track here in the two-man horse suit start line everyone will start together it's one lap of this course i have got the hooda ready are you ready ham I'm ready, Ando. These horses are looking incredible. Matt, we're going to be in your hands. So they're set for a start. Here we go, guys. Australia's richest horse race suit. Stand by. They're off now. Making a clean getaway out of the one-man suits is Gazelle. And it jumped beautifully. Showing good speed here is Harry Trotter. It's one of the two-man suits, and it leads. So Harry Trotter's right up there, showing some good pace. Also is Far Out as they come into the back. So Far Out's got a good break here. Moving into second placing on the outside came Harry Trotter. They're followed then by Fartlap, who's next in the field. Further back then came A. Bernie. It's down on the inside there, and just up in front of that is Fartlap as they go into the back. They're followed further back in the field by Zippo. Well back came Silver as they turn into the back straight. About three or four lengths further back in the field came Leg Throw Lenny. Then starting to make some ground. The first of the one-man suits, and that is Gazelle. And he's really going after the two-man suit leaders. Next in the field, starting to tire there was Leg Throw. 
Pro Lenny as they go along the back straight. So let's catch up with these leaders now. And going strongly out in front is far out. And it leads the way. It's about four or five links in front. Gazelle. Where's this one-man suit runner? He's going after the leader strongly. So coming off the back straight. They've got half a lap to go. And the leader is far out. It's out on a long, long lead here, far out. Gazelle starting to make some ground. He's got the second. And they're followed then also right up there as they come up towards the home turn here is hometown hero so up to the home turn and far out the leader gazelle starting to close and there's also another one coming out of the pack another one of the one man suits it might be stall gift winner gee he is the omen tip so it looks like to be a race in three as they come around the home turn where it's redback ranger who had gotten the lead from far out but stall gift winner is coming on and they're followed further back in the field by gazelle who's starting to tire and also making ground as red eye rifle man but stall gift winner had charged to the front halfway down the straight he's raced away running into second place in came red eye rifle man but it's all stall gift winner it's a minute in front and stall gift winner is going to be a horse race suit champion stall gift winner has bolted it in one by about 35 meters second in came red eye rifle man and they're followed then by red back ranger who's in a photo finish for third with rascal's redemption in fact rascal's oh. redemption might have grabbed the third there for red back ranger then came next was Murray, extremely Tyre, good call back, unbelievable Murray who farted is our winner as we well done did you knew you had it in you uh, no, <laughs> not at any stage. Uh, who farted? I'm, I'm just so pl- proud, proud that we can say the winner of the race that slows down the nation is who farted. And it could obviously could be one of 7,000 people. That's the question. <laughs> who is it? It looked like, Ham, a photo for third. It did. And a bit of jostling um, with between a two-man horse suit and Tom. Rascal's redemption. We will... The horses are coming in now. Still finishing. <laughs> just, it's, it was a, it's a slow field. This is amazing to oh, watch. These guys have absolutely left nothing in the tank. Every single horse that was in this race the has pa- pushed themselves to the absolute limit. The paper mache suits <laughs> just crossed. That's fallen in a heap as we have the last ones I, make up the rear. I haven't seen Jess Melboy arrive yet. She may be amongst the pack, but we'll go to a song. Well, when I was standing on the corner and uh, um, ex-Wallaby Pat McCabe in the Brumby Jack okay. outfit, was right near the end of the pack, just yeah. in a solid jog. <laughs> Pat, we have, still haven't seen him cross the line. We've got to talk to our third place getters too. A couple of local lads who I think might have been etched out for third. We'll have a look at it. Yeah, Pat missed the start. I'll confirm that. He still hasn't crossed. It's what a race, Ando. What a race. The presentation's after this. Unbelievable scenes. As I think all our horses, our people in horse suits, have crossed the line by now. But if you've just tuned in, You've missed the race that slows down the nation. I'm pretty sure it's well covered at hamishnetty.com or any of our social pipes. Guys, Hashtag the people's race. There are still horses lying on the track after just busting their gut yes. to get to the end. Can we just hear it one more time for the horses? <laughs> As, Again, something you don't hear at the moment, Cup? No. <laughs> As 7,000 people watched on, Ham. Unbelievable. It was an incredible race. And it didn't disappoint. Our, at, we, it's the first time we got to chat to him today, but can we welcome the Mayor of Wedderburn, everybody? Gavin here. How good was that? How good was that? <laughs> Gavin, <laughs> I, I believe um, you've got a little bit of uh, a speech to say, something prepared, which we're excited about, Gav, uh, ahead of the presentation. So, oh, look, the floor look, is yours, my friend. Yeah, OK, look, thanks for that. Hoofhearted may have won the stall gift, but he's just raced himself into racing immortality here at Wedderburn. <laughs> yes, he has joined all the great champions that have graced this track. He's joined Faye Marie and Jenny and Fosmar and thousands of others. We all know yes. them. Uh, Jeez, that is, that is rare air. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, he may have won the stall gift, but I tell you what, he's now famous. Yes. He's now famous Australia-wide. And, can, and, and let's, let's quickly talk about third place. Well, we should also point out how the stall gift, sorry, for people who don't know, it's the richer, richest amateur race. It's a running race, and, uh, and Murray, who is inside Hoof Hearted, has won that race before. We'll chat to him a little later, see how it compares that victory versus this victory. Well, third place, um, we had our local here. Heroes, uh, the guys from the Redbacks footy team, tied together. Oh, look. Two-man horse suit. 
So they're, they've done the town proud, I'd imagine, Gav. Pardon? They've done the town proud. I'd oh, have they ever? They've done the town proud four years out of the past five as well by winning four of the past five premierships. Yep. Yeah. And be warned, everybody, be warned, we're coming again. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. A little bit of a cross-promotional <laughs> platform here at the race that slows down the nation for the local footy cop. Well, Gavin, you're going to stand by to award the cheque. Guys, would you please make him feel very welcome the people's hero, as we set the tone, he has won a stall gift race before. He is a runner, and his name is hoof-hearted inside that suit. He ran in a difficult seat, and he ran in the full-body carpet seat. He took no <laughs> shortcuts. Guys, the people's champion, Murray. <laughs> A, uh, a, a, our lovely trophy ladies coming in now. <laughs> uh, Gavin, you can give that across to Murray, the cup. And, uh, and can take it away, Gav. Well done, Murray. Here, here is something for you to remember this for the rest of your days, because mm. you are now an immortal. Yes. And this can go beside your store gift trophy. And speaking of Murray, would you all give a great big cheer, cheer for the person that means you are all here today, Michelle Murray, Thanks, Michelle. who ended us. Yeah. Great work, Michelle. Head of the committee. She did enter the sound of Rutherford. <laughs> hey, um, the two-man horse suits had a hell of a head start. Um, how did you feel about, you know, as you round the turn, did you think you could have got them? Uh, to be honest, yeah, they, they, they did, the voice did such a good job and there was uh, horses still on that first turn and, and uh, the gaps were closing up pretty quickly, especially when the, uh, the bum end of the horse was sort of going here, there and everywhere. So it wasn't really easy to uh, pick the line that you wanted to run through, but it got through in the end. Well, mate, I mean, let's just hear... I'd love to hear the crowd cheer um, your horse's name, Hoofhearted. Yeah. Um, one, one, two, two three. three. <laughs> what a special moment. Our second place, Red Eye Rifleman. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Dylan, where have you come from? Uh, I've come from Taylor's Lakes in Melbourne, so about 10 minutes from the airport. So, Shout out to the airport. Yeah. Thank you for getting us to other cities. A tremendous run. You're in an inflatable horse suit, and you appear to be like the jockey on top of that. Did you think you were going to be able to tear them down? Because they were a hell of a long way in front of you for a while there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I was pretty confident catching the two-man horse suit. Thought I could break the gap. But um, when Murray came round me at the end of the first bend, he was gone. I was, there's no catching him. So my, um, my effort was just to try and get second. And luckily I held that, so I'll take second. He did. It was epic to watch. And people will be able to see it online. So well done again, Dylan. Champion. Yes. Dylan, three now, hampers for him. And finally, we've got to speak to our man, third place. A photo for third. It was a dead heat. Yeah. Um, a couple of guys from the local town, Corey and Robbie. We talked to you earlier, Robbie. Now, last night you had a couple of beers. When I say a couple, I mean a million at the pub. You fell asleep at the pub, I believe. You were so relaxed. Cheap accommodation. (laughs) Do you think, Robbie, that you were a chance for first if that wasn't your preparation? Oh, or do you, nah. think, do you think you would have been 10th without it? 10th <laughs> yeah, without it, I think, more so. <laughs> yeah. um, Robbie and, and Corey, um, who was doing the heavy lifting there? Was one dragging the other, was other pushing the other person along? The, the cord did feel a bit tight running for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, out front. you guys did tether yourselves together so you didn't accidentally split up a smart move and it got you across the line in third place. Three hampers coming your way. Guys, put it together, of course. <laughs> For the Redback Rangers. Redback. We're going to go to a small break. Back after this, Birds of Tokyo are going to join us. We just saw to take uh, it out. the keyboardist Glenn. He ran in the race. Yes. He's absolutely knackered. He's yes. trying to rehydrate yep. backstage. He's on pure oxygen backstage. <laughs> Not unlike when Mick Jagger goes off at interval. <laughs> Has a little bit of a tank. <laughs> There's a little tank. If they're back with Birds of Tokyo after this, they were standing. The race that goes down the nation has just been won Epic. by Hoof Hearted, and we're joined on the st- stage by Birds of Tokyo. Kenny at the front. Glenn, let's quickly chat to you. You're still in your horse suit. Glenn, you just ran the race. How are you feeling? I'm oh, good. I think this is what I'm going to wear from now on. I feel more like a horse than a person, really. <laughs> Did I see you almost have a little spew? Like, you ran pretty hard. You must have missed the actual spew then. <laughs> <laughs> He's still gathering his, uh, his breath. 
after a terrific race. Was it harder than you thought, Glenn? Yeah, I didn't think it was 800 metres. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a nice little dash across the road. Yeah, much funnier when it's 20 metres. Nah, it's it? good. Yeah, the, the best part of the race was the final turn where everyone just looked at the straight and saw how long it was and just almost just stopped to put their hands on their knees and shook their head. <laughs> the dudes next to me in a two-man horse suit just said, "You guys want to just give up?" And we're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> "It's tough to it's tough to stop and blend into the crowd though when you're dressed as a horse." It was an incredible effort by all the horses, yourself included, Glenny. I think I've seen that look on some of the horses in the Melbourne Cup. Look at each other and go, "Do you want to?" Up. We're going again. <laughs> um, guys, take it away. Um, this is the new single, everyone. Birds of Tokyo. I go with you anywhere. It's taken from the singles collection playlist. It's available now. Take it away, fellas. What Thanks a day, guys. guys. Thank you for coming. Thanks for making everyone's day. Tokyo, everyone. The new single, I Go With You Anywhere, it's available now. The singles awesome. album is out on Friday. If you've just joined us, we're looking out at around about, what, 5,000 people, Ham, 6,000 people. I re- yeah, we think it's swelled to about seven, seven and a half for the yeah. race. People, just a few people going home now, but it's still at least 5,000 people here watching Birds of Tokyo. Yeah. It's an epic day, and Ham, at the end of every epi- epic day, it's nice just to look back. And reflect. God, you need a montage. Hamish and Andy's race that slowed down the nation. If you're here in Wedderburn, let's hear you. <laughs> the day started with 50 horses parading through the main street of Wedderburn. A marching band led us off. Followed by the Mayor Gavin driving a tractor. No tractor, they can't get us started. They can't get a tractor started. Hit a gas tractor. <laughs> With Hamish and Andy sitting atop hay bales in the trailer. How many people do you reckon are here? Thousands, mate. Thousands? I'm not joking. <laughs> no, I don't. Normally we would joke, but I think there is actually thousands of people here. This is what it feels like to be in a slow in the parade. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting overtaken by the horses. <laughs> in the lead up to the big race, we checked out the form of some of our runners. First of all, name and horse. Redback Ranger. Robbie here had a fair few too many at the pub last night. Are you the captain of the footy team, Rob? Yeah, I am, yes. Was it a captain's innings last night? Yeah, it was, yes. Good knock. <laughs> Bought up the tongue. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage Jess Malboy, everyone. You know what I'm doing, right? Well, tell I'm them. racing. She wants to race, race, everyone. Race. <laughs> I don't think we've had it in an event, Ham. Someone do the national anthem. <laughs> And then run down and play the game. <laughs> Pat McCabe, ex Wallaby. Pat retired from rugby union because uh, you kept breaking your neck. Uh, sure. How do you feel about wearing a giant horse head? <laughs> I don't know. I should have got some medical advice, maybe, but it should it's, be right. It's good rehab, though, isn't it? Yeah, don't absolutely. they recommend you do head weights? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm not like Fashions of the field, there's a lot of scrutiny. I don't like it, Ando. No, it's a bit, it's a little bit judgy. Give us a call, 13, 10, 60, and then just direct me blindly through the crowd and using fate as a system, yes. I will land on the person that has won fashions on the field today. Hamish is essentially a human skill tester. Take 27. Well, we're going to do it, but we're going to land straight in picnic territory. Okay. One, two, three, four. Yep. So close to hitting the Savoys, just missed them. <laughs> We've got our very identical person marquee, VAP, so we're hoping for a great look-alike to join us. Andy, you don't know who he's meant to look like, no. But there is absolutely no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, David David Boone! Boone. (laughs) Part of the game today was people rock up to this tent and if they don't look enough like the person, the doorman would send them away. You knew that you were getting in, didn't you? He didn't know who Booney was. He didn't know who Saddam Hussein was. <laughs> I've, got, I've got Saddam as a backup. <laughs> and finally, it was the moment we all slowed down for. Come from far and wide for the greatest horse suit race in history. <laughs> and they look a million dollars. Stand by. Suits is Gazelle and 
It jumped beautifully, showing good speed here is Harry Trotter. It's one of the two-man suits and it leads. Far out's got a good break here. Moving into second place from the back then came a Bernie as they go into the back. An amazing race, but there could only be one winner. But Stall Kick winner had charged to the front. Halfway down the straight, he's raced away. Running into second place in Cape Red Eye, rifle man, but it's all Stall Gift winner. It's a minute in front, and Stall Gift winner is going to be a horse race suit champion. Did you knew you had it in you? No, <laughs> not at any stage. I'm just so proud that we can say the winner of the race that slows down the nation is hoof hearted. What a winner, and what a day for the inaugural race that slowed down the nation. Consider yourself slowed down, Australia. Unbelievable, Ando. Great scenes. Hey, it's all we've got time for. In fact, we've run super late. But um, we've got Birds of Tokyo here. They're going to perform again. Mate. A couple of thank yous. So many thank yous. Um, first of all, to the horses that ran today. Yeah. Unbelievable effort from all the horses. And their trainers. Coming and from trainers. all around Australia. The Stall Gift winner, a.k.a. Hoof Hearted. <laughs> He took it out. A couple of local boys took out third in their two-man horse suit. Uh, Corey and Robbie, unbelievable scenes here at Wedderburn. Thank you to to everybody that organised today, or the emergency services, or the people that had ice packs on standby and stuff like that, because they were definitely needed. (laughs) To the town of Wedderburn, uh, 500 people. We swamped it today. You're easily kept up. You're easily all here because there's thousands of you here. It's got to be a ghost town in town at the moment. <laughs> and uh, also to you guys who came from wherever you are around the wow. around Australia to be here. If you tuned in, you certainly don't all live here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being a, a member of the Turf Club just by tuning into the radio show. HamishNanny.com for anything you may have missed. Hashtag the People's Race. They're going to stick around and play. After the show's finished, Birds of Tokyo, but we take us out. We do also have to throw a special shout out to to Jess Mowboy. Um, amazing, amazing vocals, amazing national anthem, into Pony, and then she ran in the race, and we haven't seen her since. So we hope she's okay because we know she's going to sing the national anthem at the Melbourne Cup tomorrow. Yeah. But as Ando said, Birds of Tokyo, unbelievable. The guys have guys have come here. They were busting to come here. They now are. They're going to stick around and play afterwards, which is awesome. The Singles Collections playlist, it's out on Friday. This one is on it. Take it away, boys. Thanks very much. Thanks for helping us make history. And thank you, guys. Thanks for having us, what up?